What's poppin' people? Welcome back to the Miss Play for Game podcast. As always, I'll be your host and cast here, Elixir. Hey, the internet. It's Scruffy Tom. How's it going? Happy Saturday. We're back on the weekend. I got turned into a YouTube short again, and I'm not the happiest with my locals result. But, you know, <laughs> another week, another dollar. What's going on, Astral? Uh, uh, sorry, misplay for uh, game podcast. <laughs> Democracy failed us. I've not been on since that happened. That is, yeah. I actually today went and changed the the old like Pod Squad uh, things to just be misplay for games. So like, it was weird seeing. That. I was like, yeah, we haven't seen you in a while. That's how my mum knows you. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, I was oh, just yeah. like, I was talking to her, and she was like, "Oh yeah, so which one's Tom?" Like, okay, so you know the podcast, and like, yeah, it's like, is he describes Marcia? Like, no, that one's Marcia. I used to work with him. Tom was the other one. It's like, okay, Tom. It's like, and so which one's Harry? And it's like, so if you go to the second episode, it's like, oh, this guy. <laughs> are we on uh, just chatting, or are we on like Digimon? We're always on just chatting to start, because you know what, people, we do be just chatting. We be any yapping. Sometimes we be yapping, yeah. What Listen, everybody's allowed to yap. Despite what I might say, everybody's allowed to yap a little bit. Yeah, some of us I may disagree. even be yapping. How's it going, gang? It's weird that we're on a weekend again. Yeah. I, was just saying I mean, it's like started. pre 7 p.m. as well. Yeah, this will probably, I mean, the weekends will continue, but the pre 7 p.m. is maybe not going to continue. We'll be back to our evening slot probably, but like. That we'll figure that out when it gets to it. One thing though, I do want to say, shout out to everyone that got us to uh, 1.8k. We hit it today. We're now like comfortably. You're already at 1.8. Yeah, we're comfortably oh my the God. biggest uh, UK Digimon like gameplay channel featuring other stuff. Gameplay channel. That's gone up like nuts this last three weeks. Yeah, shout outs to Alphamon versus Terriamon. People really wanted to see those two hit each other. I that. Like, I had not been on the channel playing anything in a hot minute. Like, I think the last time you had, like, I was on a high table was Amphi versus Mirage, where you watched me miss a rookie and then play versus a deck that was mine but better. Um, so it was like, oh, no, now, now everyone gets to watch me, like, fumble through this. And it's like, okay, well, it, it, it went all right, but I'm not sure scary. Mega Gargo Ace is a scary card. I'd yeah. like to use my, I'd like to use my Aura Yukon at some point, please. <laughs> Yeah, we're solid. We've also, like, we've hit some pretty decent milestones. Being, like, the biggest channel is very poggers. Uh, but also, members were into double digits comfortably now. We had, uh, we've got a suite of Ultimates, Champions, people enjoying the Boko that's coming out for the public. Uh, you want it a month early. Be, like, the cool kids and uh, be at the Champion tier or higher. I'm trying to do more things for the upper tiers, but, like, that is something that we'll figure out another time. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's the most thing. Just general, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, you want to be part of the growing club of people, make sure to do that. If you're watching on Twitch, then if you have Amazon Prime, subscribing is free and gives us money. Uh, which helps us do cool things like a uh, tournament that is like... Not on the download, because we keep talking about it every week, but it's still in the planning stages. Also, you get, like, if you figure out the secret button input combination, you get to be the mega level on the videos now, which is a fun thing you threw in there. Yeah, it was one of you those You know the ones. Konami code and get that shit switched on? Like, I just, when I was setting up the member tiers, I was like, I'm not making a mega tier, that's stupid. Which is why they've, like, it just caps out at ultimate, and then mm -hmm. my hand was forced. And yeah. luckily, <laughs> we had a slot open. I was not coming up with, like, some creator card difference, like actually above the mega level, there is the secret tier, <laughs> the giga level. <laughs> the giga level. What are we Super doing today, mega. fellas? What's in store for us? Uh, we got a couple of things to talk about today. So, like we were saying before we started recording, back on Saturday means that for a lot of people watching this, uh, it is Ulti Cup Day. Um, there is an Ulti Cup going on. I think it's a core TCG event. I'd have to triple check that. Right now? Yeah, like today. Yeah. Starts this morning and Saturday in uh, Eastern Standard. So I, I've been told there's one in Florida. I forget if it's this one or not. The actual locations versus if they're online events, sometimes I get them mixed up. But I'm sure somebody, as the internet loves to do, will send me a very nice comment about it. Epic. Um, but we've also got a ton of updates on... Alphamon Cups, we're about halfway through that format for that uh, specific BT17 slot. It's been really interesting. 
it is a lot less. I mean, maybe there is something about prize cards versus playing for qualification points for larger events. Um, but there does seem to be a real shift in terms of like what people are playing for Alphamon Cups and Evo Cups compared to like showing up at a bigger event. And then lastly, we've got, as always, some recurring segments. So got some stuff to do today. Going to be a busy Saturday. I just want to talk about Blue Hybrid, man, because what a stupid day. <laughs> <laughs> so glad Blue Hybrid's back. It literally has only been waiting for a second Koji this entire time. Yeah, and it's... damn, what a second Koji. Yeah, and the other thing is the option card, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we got Harry here, too. So there's the fun thing is that there's a bunch of, like, we have an option to do a bunch of very silly ex-antibody decks. Like, it's been a good time, if that's your thing. So I uh, I think we have a pretty fun array of the format. Let me go ahead and say shout-outs, as always, to East the Man. For putting up there. Here's Meadow Breakdowns. Dude does a lot of good filtering through, like, five-man events versus, like, getting actual statistics. Um, but essentially, I want to talk about a couple decks in particular. There's like a top five, top ten sort of bubble for Digimon right now over in the uh, in the Eastern format. Uh, way out in front are like the big five, right? Like these are the decks that are like you're gonna see them at every event. You're gonna you, I, unless a ban list comes along, they will likely control our BT17 format, and then frankly, our EX6 format, because there isn't really anything coming out of VT17 other than Imperial, which we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> hey, you can't you can't ignore the two-cost ele- two cost red-blue elephant in the room. Yeah, well, he, he is <laughs> very good. Miraculous Ultimate Knight. Uh, you, see, this is what I'm saying. That deck is tight, but it's actually kind of just gatekeeping as opposed to winning. Um, in yeah. order, our topping lists at the moment are uh, Imperial, uh, Blue Armor, uh, Yellow Armor has some success, but it's predominantly the Vmon base at the moment. Uh, Takami Kazuchi, so the like Fenrir SOC stuff, but with a separate top end. Numemon, because it's getting new toys. And Mirage. These are like the top five. You'll see them pretty continually. Um, I don't... We'll maybe get a chance to talk about some of the things about these decks, like individual cards that have sort of pushed them past their sell-by date, let's say. Um, and then after that, as a little bit of a step down, there's SOC... Dex Darugamon, sort of also just Darugamon, but the Dex package is sort of taking way out in front. <laughs> and mean, that's the thumbnail. It's like... And then Dex the car Lizard! The first wave was, like, decent, but it, would, it couldn't really keep up with, like, you know... Forced the Combat other. is one of Digimon's most heinous inclusions this game has ever gotten. Like, Slayer Dramon, fucking EX3... What a what a what a card, right? But like that had you know a bunch of weird ways to play around it. The first time I had to explain to someone that yes, you can choose a Digimon incapable of combat as your attack target, and then make the forced combat fade is obnoxious. But Laplace's Demon and its style effects are really good at getting around things that shouldn't be able to be got around. So I'm like pretty, you know, I'm just... pretty happy honestly with the fact that like the the natural evolution of like color identity was like. Okay, so we're gonna make blue. It forget about can't attack, can't block. We're gonna go can't suspend. And then they were like, mm, "Green, what if you just attack at the end of the turn? What what are we giving black? Mm, make the opponent attack." Yeah, that's a really good one. I mean, uh, it is. It's like, yeah, yeah. The, the the punish like because they try to make uh, forever, never, ever ago. Like they gave us a, those wave of black cards, or it was like. Uh, by Humon BT9 and like that era of stuff where it's um, what's it called? Uh, like things that punished your opponent for either leaving things unsuspended or for not swinging like that turn. Remember the Greymon that's like the ES, like if your opponent didn't attack this turn, draw a card. Or like mm-hmm. by Humon was like for all of your opponent's unsuspended things, you would like it would burn security. I or love BT9 by Humon. That thing was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> there was also this... half a Ragnarok one. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> I had this one week where I put that puppy in Davis just to see if I could make it work. That oh, was... God. It was actually better than I thought. I, I, the first version of Davis I played played that, because I remember my immediate progression of Davis was the only good the only good Davis are the black ones, because they have the blocker ESS, because the best part of every Sovereign is it's on delete, so being able to block makes it easy. Yes, Dorumon is wearing a tie. He looks rather dapper, doesn't he? Um, but, uh, what's it called? Speaking of Dorumon and black and updated keywords, uh, Collision Box. So, like, the 16 version of the deck, like Marcio said, like the first wave launched really good. Like the first, the, the four, sorry, five cards it got of Dorumon, Doruga, Dorugre, Gora, and then Kosuke are just like 
solid cards. Um, the the thing that it had is like a like a weird niche is the way unaffected in Digimon works. Like it's you can still have things applied to you, but like they don't affect you until your protection expires. So the thing that Gora did was you would tag the Magnamon or the thing next to the Magnamon with must declare an attack, pass turn, and then at the start of their turn before they can use a blinding ray or you know check one of your security check one of their own security to trigger magnamon's protection you can force something to swing and then hopefully kill it um i like to think that stuff. you know how like uh magic does their like oh you know if you win a tournament or something like that we make like a custom card for you mm -hmm. i like mm -hmm. to think there's an alternate reality where like we get you know terry just goes dummy wins worlds and then they put him in the game. Richard Sampson, but it's Terry. It's yeah, it's Terry, and it's like start of main phase. Oh, burn a security if you feel like it, and that's the way that you get around. You're like on Magnet X. You're like, oh, Terry, get rid of a security. It Terry just blows. <laughs> the actual so nightmare funny. is because it, the actual nightmare is because it's start of main. That card already exists. Its name is Patamon. Ugh, oh, start of main promote pad up start of main promote pad him on and then you get to pick the order in your start of main so you go pad him on to evolve from security and if something was in there you removed a card so magnamon gains protection and then you go start of main swing with your a thing that has to attack pretty base and if the pretty thing you evolve into from security is golden rapid and you suspend the blocker then i can't even get a uh attack target change so i can't even evolve into gora that's like the nightmare that's that's the thing that's really bad like the the yellow vac piles are really bad for Gora and his cohorts, but bros giving called? out tips for free. I mean, yeah, but like whatever. The the Gora as a deck, I don't think is going to be like super relevant in sixteen. You'll see someone dicking around with it because like yeah. they are. Yeah, you'll see someone dicking around with it because uh, they're coping. There are. I think it has something to be gained for being in a more than best of one format. Like I think the idea that like forcing mechanics upon your opponent are stronger, like. The same oh, yeah. that Davis has done linearly better here in the West because of best of three as well. Or it's okay. like if your opponent has to draw that out three times instead of one time, it's mm -hmm. like a big deal. Um, the other, oh. so no, it's good. Okay. Uh, the other thing as well is that like I, I think best of three will be helpful for it, but also a hindrance towards it. Saf and Andrew can both vouch because when we were testing sixteen games, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get yourself turn skipped by accident. Yeah, it really like farms aces like hard. like if you if you give me if you give me an ace without thinking about it too much, I'm taking it and your turn. Yeah, I can believe it. So it's like it's it's I think it's a very solid deck. I also think that like I think going wide is fundamentally broken in Digimon. Like I think lots of guys is just like the way that the card game works, that's just stronger. Like you have like archetypes don't usually have in engine main outs to just a fuck ton of dudes mm -hmm. uh you almost always have to like dig into like utility sevens or um option cards to deal with that kind of stuff so it's like crimson blazes um quartzes ruin modes like you have to, you have to get like death x you have to get into like specific things to deal with wide boards whereas lots of things are equipped to deal with a single dickhead yeah so like i i think yeah well, they're budgeted oh, at a premium much, for them. That, that's also not to mention the other appeal of Gora is obviously uh, the the new protection that the Doraemon BT15 gives you is like it's a very large list of things. It's like he's he's un he can't leave the battle area except by deletion. Or sorry, he can't leave the battle area by effect except by deletion. So the list of things that kills him is deleting by effect as intended, combat, and then DP reduction. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a fun one. The one thing I also want to point out is um, uh, it is very very funny that um, your tamers are just like you use them for the Sephiroth mod, and then at the end of turn, like right after they go, you must commence combat. Not with me though, and it just backs straight yeah, back out not, to not, the back line. Like, like <laughs> Sephirothmon pointing at Dory Greymon. All right, now swing into this thing. Like at least when you had to use a hybrid for uh, not game, it was like, okay, that tame uh, is gone for the rest of the day, and then it's just like, nope, I'm here to print memory next turn. Yeah, the mind link stuff is that's, so good. That's with those the cards. other. That's the other thing with Gore is it's like the the two styles that it's kind of evolved into because obviously the the first thing people immediately tried was oh this is another set of cards named Doru Gamon Doru Greymon and Doru Goramon. Let's put Dexes on top of them <laughs> and next to them. 
Yeah. Uh, and like that was okay. The problem is it's just like the source load gimmick X antibodies from seven, eight, and nine. Um, like they very specifically need all of their toys to work. And Gora has still been like Gora has still been living the punished life of he doesn't unsuspend, so he really did need a security inherit. Like he really did need to swing for four checks and then sit there. Mm -hmm. Where so the death of Dora Greymon has not been kind to him. The new one has like an advantage now where the new one unsuspends and has piercing, so he gets to do his like own fun thing. So like the SO, like the actual Dex Dora Gora, like Dex cards plus Gora cards was okay. The problem I had when I was testing that build was you actually just deck out. <laughs> like you just you literally just resolve cool boys and you don't have or you can to put seven back. Yeah. So you just deck out. Um and then the other style and the one that I ended up uh becoming much more attached to and things a lot more fun is like I just started calling it SOC box. There's just like the critical mass of like your rookies are all the Dorumons. Um and then your fours are uh, SOC Doruga, Erdramon, and then like Sephirothmon. Uh, and you're like you just play the lineup of like Koshke's Marvins. Uh, no, Sephiroth is the you don't play the sheep. Uh, he costs he costs three to evolve. Oh, and then, like, the mirror, yeah, Sephiroth the is the mirror hybrid. tamer. Yeah, the black the black hybrid that has the replaces demon effect on evolve. Yeah, yeah. Like you just slap it on top of uh, Koshke or Marvin, and then you can evolve them into Doru Greymon. Um, but yeah, so it's like the the first wave of stuff like the SOC box felt like the best way to do it. It's like also giving, uh, I think the strongest effect. The, the the entire deck is like held together by VT sixteen Doru Greymon. Like once again, they can't seem to de design X antibody cards without Doru Greymon staring you down, going, "Hello, I am the beating heart of your archetype." Um, because he's how you evolve wall colliding or evolve wall blocking, uh, and also for some reason is a necromancer now. Big ups, I love my studied giraffe dragon. I like that he can now read and cast spells. So like you just get to revive heinous shit and. Among the most heinous, and I think the realest payoff is if you revive an Erdvermon while holding a Marvin, you gain access to D Digivolve on your opponent's turn, which is just deeply yeah. fucked. Yeah, pretty good. It's part of the turn skip that rocks yep. my shit frequently. Yep. Did you leave that Magna Angemon exposed? Uh, 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 unlucky. It's D Digivolve now. <laughs> I'll let that three memory and go. Uh, but yeah, that, that's like 16 Gore. A bumper card lizard, good. It's a funny format too. Like, there's a lot of like incremental pieces that they added to that deck over time to kind of give mm -hmm. it the legs to get to where it is right now in seventeen. Mm -hmm. So, like, you look at some of the results. Like, I, I've got, I think, I one I've already posted in our chat is Imperials. We'll come back to that. Oh, I've got Imperial ready to go. Okay, cool. There's also the, I just posted. If we want to still talk about Doru Goromon, what we've got, Harry. Um, shout out to Zario, one of Thailand's preeminent Digimon TCG players, a national yeah. champion. This is seventeen list. This is the deck stuff um so there's a lot of like part of it is just like these archetypes are <laughs> i'm hesitant to say it's kind of like peak keyword soup but we have sort of arrived at like this deck can play everything that's called soc and everything that's called x antibody and make use of all of it so there's a ton of value in this this is an alphamon cup winner we kind of mentioned the alphamon cup stuff seeing a little bit of a different format there are a lot of winners on things that aren't winning everything overall um, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, but one of the things that I've had a lot of conversation with about folks who have been excited by this deck is that this is a version where, like, unlike a pure SOC deck, this one has gone back to Cool Boy, um, which I think is really neat. There's something to be said yep. for the fact that, like, they have access to a sort of more, I guess, designed ex antibody build where they can have more card draw, they can have the memory extending that they would have been used to. Um, and obviously without the need to have like retroactive source adding, all of the cards don't get used up on one stack. So when you do eventually sort of go wide and make the necromancer stuff that Harry was talking about, you have options to just make bigger and bigger things. Um, and then it's probably worth reiterating just how crazy Dex Dorogoromon as a card actually is. If you haven't read Dex Dorogoromon, it is like a custom black purple nightmare. Um, his effect is he is a 13 play cost, 13 KDP giant level 6, 5 over a purple, black, or purple 5, and he goes over Dorogora for 2. But what he really does is Levium on X type beat where he yep. evolves from trash and ignores his removal. 
and so, that's purple's new thing which is yeah. evolving from trash for no additional i love cost. the illusion of resource management this one, i love pretending that i did something as i draw one trash one to my way into my wind condition being in a near uninteractable zone well so print, you say all print that. more paladin modes you say all that they actually thought of a way to make this even more frustrating than leviamon x if you ask a lot of people which is that despite being as good trash synergy as the other ones would be, they managed to squeeze in just enough black flavor to this so that when you do your free evolution from trash, you're also invincible. Yeah. Licorice. Yeah, very fun. Um, but, so he's regardless of if you do his bullshit from trash or not, which the reason that you wouldn't is going to come up in a second when we talk about a tamer card, which to be fair is not in the list Zerio piloted, but is in some other list that you'll see. Um, Regardless of how you trigger it, you de-digivolve something three times, which is so much de-digivolving that it sort of doesn't make sense. Um, and then the when way, another Digimon... That you were doing this at forced combat while probably blocking the thing that you needed to evolve. Very funny. Yeah, and then it has the same all turns unsuspended. unsuspended. So. He is critically missing collision, but like that's fine. Just revive something else with collision and then use that as your forced combat tool for next turn. But, like, also, we have the new Agumon. I forgot what he did. But, yeah, but, like, he uh, gets... You get a... Tra trauma Termo Agumon. Yeah. <laughs> He's, it's actually pretty sweet. So this card has two uses. Obviously, you spit out the, uh, what's his name, uh, Kosuke what? at the end of the yeah. Sephiroth Mon turn. So you can yoink one memory back as you pass turn over to your opponent. Yep. Um, which is very funny. But the like, main appeal is... To pass you, yeah. This is the uh, only three in the archetype with Reboot. So that does uh, do a little bit of helping. Does it? Isn't, isn't, the, isn't Warped Orumon also Reboot? Is yeah, Warped Orumon. Warped Orumon's not in this list, though, because he's kind of a little bit less good. Yeah, Warped I didn't... Warped Orumon's wait. also reboot. Warped Orumon from... 17. Which... Oh, that card... That card. Uh, well, it probably has a niche somewhere. It probably has a niche somewhere. The other somewhere. thing is... The other actual reboot Inherit, though, is new Dextoruga. SOC Dextoruga is reboot Inherit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of really neat stuff in the archetype. One of the, the things very mentioned... Like, the, very, the 17 versions of the deck, just like, I, I've been like chewing like i've been eating as much of this as i can just like trying to see versions of this deck because like now now that like there's enough cards that are soc and x anti tagged like the new deck stories are just such a big deal um because it's like you can still play all these soc cards but then cool boys opened up again and the the real nightmare card is in anything that can revive this much of its own deck protoform is really fucking good like protoform is really fucking good yep it's right. really good yeah, and so it's just like the the two Doru Goras though form this like backbone of like forced combat into block with Doru Greymon, and then you can like the two Goras because uh, Dex Doru uh, sorry Doru Greymon when he like when an attack target becomes changed, it can evolve into SOC Beast Dragon or Undead, so we can evolve into either Gora uh, at like combat step. So then you can de evolve the thing you're trying to block if it's too big for you to block normally, or if it's like a thing that you can block safely and there's something next to it you want to kill, you go into a regular Gora. It's it's lots of very good stuff. Rare, by the way. Are you yeah. ready? No, yeah. Uh, no, well, no, no, no. The, de the Dex is a super. The regular Doru Gora is a rare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The regular Gora is a rare. This card's gonna get like an ult or like a stamp or something like yeah, Orumon it, did. This was the card that won the, the SR is the SR concept. in this arc. Yeah, the SR in this uh in the first wave of the archetype is Dorumon himself. Which to be fair, if you read that all inclusive list of protections, yeah, I I would give it to him. That's that's a, like that's super, uh, that is a super rare Dorumon. Do you play this in Alpha just just for no reason? Uh you don't you I mean like you know the one K DP Dorumon that you already played? Oh, you replace it with this? You probably just replace it with this because it still evolves over Dorymon. Um, and like the, you could basically lie to your no. I'm not gonna say you can lie to your opponent, but you can make your opponent acknowledge that they might have to play around Kosuke, the Kosuke protection slash piercing slash blocker at some point during the game, even if you're not playing it. And like, there's there's no reason not to. Also, in theory, it's like you can now play even more purple black like cards to make uh, metal impulse alive if you want to play metal impulse but, or you play purple cards like you could play uh calling from darkness in alpha mon speaking <laughs> of playing add back purple it's specifically uh, back to purple, purple digimon yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, but if you did want to play purple. 
if you did want to play purple cards, another Alpha Mon Cup winning Dextor Goromon list is here. I've just dropped that in our pod chat here as well, fellas. Uh, this is much yeah. closer to an SOC variant as opposed to an X antibody variant. It's like I was saying before, the deck really has multiple ways to try and expand it. Scare. Um, oh, there's, 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 a warp there's an elephant there. in the room that we'll talk about. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk about Takami Kazuchi as its own thing in a minute. Um, but the predominant, like, oh, wow, yeah, there really is a big uptick here, is uh, Demon Wolf Castle of the Nine Wolves is a custom search card that archetypes are being given these days. Pulse has got one. The uh, What's it called? Uh, the DNA Kids Investigation all got one. Bureau, Bureau. Yeah, yeah, very good cards. Invest- yeah, the same for Investigation Bureau. So these custom search cards are phenomenal. But really, like, when it comes down to brass tacks, the ability for you to, like, lean further into the purple stuff, like, play one card with SOC trait from purple with play cost reduced by two, really does just read produce a Kosuke from hand for nothing, which is very efficient. It's from trash. It's from trash. Sorry. The Kosuke comes from trash off the Doramon? Oh, no, the Doramon doesn't revive from trash, but Doramon started main anyway. Yeah, I realize that. I'm just saying, like, you have options to getting more and more pieces out, so... Uh, it's a pretty sweet thing. Uh, I think they've got a good thing going here. Uh, the other cards in this deck are scrambles for the other reason, which is that you can go scramble. Combat. Well, you go you go scramble force combat, or you go scramble start of main, play the coast. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you have lots of options. Okay, scrambles are good. On, on the scramble, are they picked like two, like ten out of ten, like level three? This you know, is like... the thing with the scrambles. They had they included all of like all the scrambles the that have teams. a possible ghost game thing. Have them. Like, if you want to just, like, quickly look at the scrambles, it's, like, the red one is Agumon, Gamamon, Gilmon, which is, like, that's pretty much as good as a red one could be, right? Like, yeah, if you have to deep. include Gamamon there, like, uh, yeah, fucking turn the game on. Yeah, there you go. Like, in order of the red one first. Like, Agu, Ga- Gamma, Gil, it's, like, if Gamma has that's to be here, I guess it's okay. That's red. Uh, I think I am a huge fan of the blue one. The yeah, blue I one like Jelly. The but no, like, the, yellow, think, the yellow one is I, the best. The yellow I one is the best. I think Jelly could have easily been cut for, um, what's it called? Jelly could have been cut for, like, a Galmon or something, but it's Wait, fine. The yellow one is really ghost? good. Was there, the like, yellow, ghost game? Well, no, there isn't a ghost game in yellow, so... So they, they just... They, yeah, could, they so. got away with it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that is pretty good. This is, this is kind of, like, a pretty good yellow, like, all-star lineup. Like, maybe Salomon, but I think Patamon's more iconic. Is Greens, thing, Greens is a nightmare. Greens Wait, is a nightmare. Um, no, 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 no. This one's good. So this is just... It's a nightmare because... It's the, because it's the first 10. time that there's no plants, right? Like, this is just the first the time they've sniffed like, plants in a while. I'm, I'm not going to say they picked the wrong bug, but they picked the wrong bug. Wormmon is... Ter- Tento! Yeah, Tento. Tento makes way more sense. But then, like, like you need Wormmon to do is, the other Wormmon's... kids. Yeah, they would have had to do like, the adventure Wormmon's... kids, guys. Agumon, Agumon and Gabumon got on here. Yeah, they don't count as the adventure kids. Yeah, they <laughs> transcend the time with, at this point. The thing with Wormmon, the thing with Wormmon though, is that Wormmon's not a fucking green card. Uh, well, to an Wormmon, Wormmon, Wormmon is, a, is a blue card, let's be real. Or a purple card at this point. Or a purple card sometimes. Yeah. But I'm cool with them know. picking Wormmon. I guess it's like because... Oh yeah, Wormmon is, Wormmon's design is great. We're, I, also, I like how we're all just ignoring Angoromon. Like, yeah, yeah, I like it. I think, I fun. know, I'm, I think Angoromon's tight. As a design for a Digimon, he's my favorite of the Ghost game by quite a lot, and that surprises me because I like dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, the black one, though, is like, like Marcio said, it's two absolute 10 out of 10 knockout perfect picks. Hover SB should probably just be either Hagurumon or Commandermon. Yeah. But like, it has to be the Ghost Game guys, so it's whatever. But like, Doramon and Karamon are like. Is it like Impmon? It, the purple one is probably actually the best lineup. Drachmon, it's just like the Impmon, most. Impmon, it, Luga. It, yeah, Drachmon, Impmon, Luga. I could take it or leave it with Drachmon. He's definitely not the purple guy I would have thought of. I would have probably pulled Debbie, up like. I think Debbie could replace Drac. And then yeah. it's like perfect, perfect. But like. Maybe. Maybe Fascomon, considering how many, or or uh, no, oh my gosh, or Gazi. yeah, got or no, uh, having a brain fart, Psychmon, Psychmon, that's like kind yeah. of hunters, hunters love as well. I guess. No, but no, you've already you're right. Got... It should have been um, it should have been Gumdramon's mom. Yeah, sure. You've got or like Chuchumon. Uh... Yeah, or Chuchumon. You're he's right, a, dude. He's, he's a black card now. He probably could have gone in black instead of Hover Espy. But it wasn't. There's a, a lot of there's, yeah. There's a lot of these that are kind of weird inclusions it's like all almost all of them are like two Wait, smash falco? hits and then like yeah oh. or falco actually yeah like th- that is the point of this i was like two of them are like smash I... hits like yeah no questions here you belong bro and then like uh how did you get in? i'll level with you Marcio. The, as, much as, them, as much as i would love for them as much as i would love for them to give me a falcomon like that 
they wouldn't because they didn't like Falcomon plays so much the fourth choice between the other Shine verse mode guys. Like, like it was never getting in over Lalamon or Agumon or Gaumon. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's sort of a, an overview on the deck stuff. I think we could probably then try and have a little bit of a scan through some of the top archetypes if you guys are interested. I like yeah, sure. uh, Imperial is the first link I posted here in this chat. Um, we'll make a super quick read through on Imperial because it is one of those decks that if you've seen it now, this it, Imperial is crazy. They really figured out exactly what the deck was going to do from now until the rest of its lifetime when they printed a starter deck. So it does hit you five to six times with Pyeldramon, and then abuses you further with other cards down the line. So uh, let's go through some of the pickups. This is particularly relevant because today here in the West, they started doing the BT-16 reveals in English. So um, if you don't know, get ready to meet some of the more annoying cards that this archetype is going to get. The Demi Vimon got revealed this morning. It's just one KDP. The DP stuff is relatively new for this archetype. Usually they just get away with jamming. Now they have threes and fours that also give DP. My um, thing with like Imperials, I feel like Japan doesn't know like what they have access to, so they keep building like suboptimal best of one lists. There's a Lydramon yeah. in here. You're gonna see like, that. It's like, it's like it's like Lydramon EX1 XV, which are cards that like modern Imperials should just not be playing anymore. Because Me the and Marcy idea have of... been screaming into the void. Th like this archetype has some cards in it that are just like so much higher quality than any BT12 XV, BT12 Sting. Yeah, they're nuts. Those like, I know these are both are four ofs in here, but like... Most. Oh no, the Sting's only a like, two. They're not four ofs. Oh it, my the god, I, the two. thing was low res. I, I hate, bro. I hate like, it so much. But that's what it says. Like, are the best ones. This deck like, wins sting, Alpha the, Cups. The Sting mod, I guess, I can argue, you can argue, you know, like, I'm willing to accept the argument on the non-once per turn draw on the old Sting mod. Yes, the Sting, the sting like, mod oh, is man, very good, the, just because... DNA you, game 2 is so... Nasty. The important thing about the Stingmon is that um, Imperial will get to a point where it will start drawing its whole deck, or you want to draw into specific pieces, whether it's like Aces or like Tamers or something like Hammer Or now the movie or, we're, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna talk about auction. Aces and Tamers. So Stingmon, <laughs> the the starter deck Stingmon kind of goes up and down depending on like what you need yeah. at the time of, right now because of the options and like your Tamer being the cracked. Stingmon, though, is that like? Um, is this less playing Three. movie? Is this one playing promo movie? Beam? Yeah, the. Oh, uh, sorry, which one? Pro, uh, the O2 movie promo beam on. The, yeah, 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 it's up at the top. It's up at the top. It's a tool. Yeah, like. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, I feel like you can just play that instead of. Okay, the but then you draw one. twice as many. But then you, also, you can also draw two for a swinging as well. Yeah, so you just, you really do just draw your whole deck. You, that's the whole point, is that like you yeah. draw and then you go, okay, I now get to. Optimal you know, line, you convert... draw three, because it's Demi V, yeah, draw, jamming. beam on, jamming, plus draw one. It's just like draw three yeah. for going sideways. <laughs> so it's you like. work by Eldramon. Yeah, the, and the other thing was that Imperial also needs to sort of have enough dp sometimes because they're we're getting to a point where like yes you have jamming in an in a uncontested board you get to like you know do your pile jam on bombos and be like whoa look at me i'm so cool swing and suspend swing and suspend partition you know baba buoy but uh you know in a real game at a tournament somebody is going to present you with a wall and imperial just does not have the necessary dp to get over things uh, especially if they're either like unaffected say for example you know like magnamon where you genuinely need DP, so yep. the or tyrant one, or tyrant. So one of the most important things now is that Imperial has to play like DP. Jamming is nice, and you will appreciate jamming, but DP is very, very necessary. The deck has sort of also arrived at this point where, like, don't get me wrong, Magnamon is still a monster. It's still probably a top five deck in the format over in BT seventeen. Like a top two deck in the format. Uh, it's. Probably it's close. There are there are really finally like other decks that can keep up with it, and this is one I, of them. Like there are yes. there are parts of this meta where it's like this deck just kills you. You're just dead. Takami yes, Yuzuki also just kills you. I agree. I I'm willing to concede to top three, but Magnamon currently it's basically like you have to be this tall to ride, and I oh yeah, I'm a cartoon like Disney villain that is constantly raising the bar. Like, yep. oh, you come back next year in a little bit taller? Well, so did I. And, like, it raises the bar just bro, a little bit bro, higher. Bro has raised the uh, the get on the roller coaster sign to account for inflation. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, everybody got these level 7 aces. That's really cool. I'm also going to play Imperial. Um, uh, Unaffected turn into Pally Ace is very funny. 
There's other cards we can talk about. Have fun, Andrew. Right? <laughs> go, uh, go get your Ghost King. <laughs> one of Anyways, the big hey, ones. Wow, look at that two cost option. What well, hang on. Before we even get to the option card, the tipping point for what? The reason this deck went from not having an answer to Magnamon to being fast enough to kill Magnamon is often attributed to the Tamer card. Oh. The Tamer card is stupid, head ass, drooling dog shit, and I and don't understand what they were going playing, for. Like what? It costs it? Spy, one of them. Bro, yeah. It, yeah, okay. it is. They don't have a so in builds where they play more of the dragon mode ace, which produces the free tamers. If this is the only tamer you have to pay for, I think in those scenarios it's okay to play a smaller number. Um, but again, you know, best of one format. Sometimes people run away with the match. Uh, but the reason this card is so efficient is because it stops you needing to just go. Okay, well, I can swing at five and just do my partition stuff. But all of a sudden, it changes the game plan to, if I'm swinging as fighter mode, I can spit out uh, all of my Vmons as well as my like partition pieces. So I'll get my XVmon, I'll get my Stingmon back, and then it's like, okay, also, I'll get back the DP Vmon. And that's a big deal, because DP Vmon is when uh, one of your other Digimon has played or Digivolves, if it had the free type, it's another memory for when you do the next partition. So going from plus two to the next DNA that you make off the next pile drawn to the plus three, and then basically going, okay, Magnamon, I got another round in me. That's when it can't fight it up anymore. So this card represents just one more wave of gas that you have to get through. It really puts Imperial as like the definitive, like this is the beatdown deck. If you do not have answers to this, you will die. Um, it's also favored into Numimon, as I understand it. One of the big things about it is just like the Pyle German SR is the craziest card in that matchup because it is a one turn baby quartz. And there is no card in Numimon oh, no. that can physically no. acquire it. It's Rosemon burst mode. Yeah. If you can if you can produce this thing fast enough, the, the Numimon player has no out. Oh, this one. Par partition yeah, sorry, partition yeah. super. He's, yeah. yeah. He's Rosemon burst mode for a turn if you DNA'd. Yeah, so. Which is up, fucking crazy to say out loud, by the way. To the source, to the, uh... Suspend all of your what? opponent's Digimon with as many or fewer Digivolution cards as Digimon, then if DNAing all of your opponent's Digimon can't unsuspend until the yeah, end of your opponent's turn. That part does not care about sources, you just don't get to unsuspend next turn. Uh, see you later, Mirage. Yeah. And genuinely, so. you stick one of these things down, then it's like, oh no. The funniest part is, like, the... Does he apply the effect even if he's evolved on top of? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a when did you evolve continues, so that's okay. irrespective. So when he then turns into floodgate dragon mode and sits there, it's like so you can't unsuspend and you can't evolve or play out by effect, otherwise fighter mode. Yeah, very or good power. cards. Um, but yeah, that's sort of why the tamer card helps so much in the matchup. Obviously, also, there's a million things with to the do. Tamer, with Andrew brought up the point that uh, it costs five, but the tamer does give you end of turn attack, so you can do your combo, drop it for five, and go. I will now declare an attack. Yeah, and over then my the, opponent's Digimon. There's the old, yeah, there is the, there's no the downside. There's the Pile Draw, which is end of attack, gain one of your own Imperial. So it's like, you can then refund one of it, minimum. Um, the other reason, there's a lot, especially if you've kept up with the EX6, one of the things people have sort of initiated to switch over to here in BT17 is that there are no Chimera Mons anymore. There's just no point. If you had an option card as good as Return to the Ancestors, and you weren't playing exclusively free-type Digimon, I would have many yep. questions for you. Um, so yeah, very good cards. Imperial is one of the decks to beat. It's obviously exceptionally popular, so that probably inflates its numbers a little bit. Um, but when you've had, way. yeah, when you've had this many waves of the most pushed archetype in Digimon's history, how could you ever be that bad, really? I mean, it started off in like BT12, right? Like they printed what on paper were insanely X X good v cards. XV Sting Worm and v, v from BT12 are just like unbelievably compact. Oh, like... and fighter mode, uh, BT12 fighter mode. Yeah, and, and, and he's here. Mode. He's here because he does enough damage. He's also yeah. here because he's the thing that you. He's the best one for a dragon. The skeleton mode was there. It was just the pile drums at the time were so like mid. I was like, there's the one pile drum that it was not they were mid. I was talking to someone. I was talking to Liam about this. It's like the problem that the pile drums had is that they were all. They made you a toolbox in a deck that didn't want a toolbox. It wanted a defined game plan. So, like, the structure deck Pyildra murdered the other guy, which was very good. Uh, the one from BT12 was the source strip thing to set up for uh, fighter mode to bot deck. And then the, um, what's it called? The Dino Beamon was, like, a way to use your piercing, right? Yep. But they all did different things. The thing that this deck now has is Pyildramon partition, like the, the SR from uh, BT16, 
is a second Pyildramon that does everything the other ones do. So he is a thing that suspends, so you can swing over and use your piercing. He lets you manipulate sources, so you can take advantage of your fighter mode. And he swings twice. He is a second copy of every other um, Pyildra. So no matter what thing you want to do, you can now play eight uh, Imperial DNA things that do the game plan you want. Yeah, it is very good. Imperial is crazy. Imperial Ace is crazy. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Also, I mean, uh, like the, the actual fucking dragon-shaped elephant in the room of they do their turn and then end on, uh, what's his name? The BC-16 dragon mode, who's just like, sat there like, hello, don't activate a training card. You will cheat die. Cheat again. Cheat. Cheat. Do it. Cheat. Do I dare you. Cheat. 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 Meanwhile, you're fucking like pointing at Davis Ken in the background who have played six memory worth of Wormons and Vmons last turn. And you're just like, yeah, but those don't count. Uh, you know, all I, the deck I is kind of crazy. Uh, going back to Magnemon, Magnemon with Scrambles is like not normal because you get to Scrambles replay good. out a Vmon and put the Magna X on top of your deck. And yep. it's like, ah, I now have to contend with like twice as many Magna X's. Oh no, there's two of them. I lose the game. Yeah, the, the thing with Scrambles, I think it's like, I think they're a super neat design because they're like, you can't just put them in decks that don't have like defensive utility. Like if you're, like, there's no point in reviving a fucking body that won't... Like, there's no point in reviving War Greymon. Like, you know, like, like War Grey X, like, killed the other guy decks. There's no point in reviving one of those unless you then build around and include, like, the uh, Agubond Xs or, like, you know, the ties that give Blocker and all that. Whereas, like, there is point in, like, revive a Vmon because you can make a Magna X with it or, like, revive a Wormmon or a Vmon because that's half your DNA. Like, those kinds of things. Well, it's also, I think the thing you're describing in those sixes, or, excuse me, not necessarily sixes because it's, like, also sometimes the reason it's good in Imperial is because you just cheat and make a thing that can attack anyway. Also but it's, seconds. your value yeah. must come from something that isn't necessarily needing to make an attack that turn. So Magna X is that guy. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I thought was really funny is that, like, Black War Grey X has kind of had a little bit of a facelift since the Scrambles came back. Because it's like, if you can scramble, make the SR Agumon evolve into Greymon from nothing, and then, like, continue to stack without needing to have paid for half the stuff you're doing. Yep. Yeah, if you end on a BWGX, you probably do punk somebody. So The other thing as well there, though, of course, is like what Marcio was saying. It's like, obviously, using it to stack, like, the boss monster of your deck so that you have to go through twice as many of them. You know, killing eight Magna Xs is a fucking Sisyphean task. Like, I don't... I, bro, go ahead, push that fucking boulder. But, like, the other one as well is it's like, hey, we've already used this one for memory gauge of the room, so if I say it this time, it's not a problem. The one-ups are still in Digimon. Yeah. And if I kill the Greymon... And they get the and at the start of like... their turn, they, yeah, yeah, and at the start of their turn, they go scramble play Agumon, place virus Greymon X to the top of my deck. I think I'm legally allowed to lunge across the table. It's actually okay. wild too. They go Agumon, then they go the Greymon that gives them plus one memory for zero. So then yep. they go Agumon plus one memory, and then the thing they stacked, which they drew off that top deck, was the Greymon virus. Was the X. Greymon virus? So evolved back for zero, and then so for it's one into Metal very, Yep, and they have now very paid, consistent. They have now paid zero memory and are on Metal Greymon. And yeah. then protoform that think, into something else. Yep. <laughs> Get do you it. think it's like interesting that we haven't seen any Dio borrow stuff just yet, Andrew? Um. What, do you think there's like some some like Dio borrow on conspiracy theory going on? They're waiting for. No, I think they're just a... becoming movie clips. The deck is really good, but like every Diaboramon list I've seen is like second or third place, and it's like second place after Omnimon or second place after Imperial. And I'm like, oh no, bro, became a movie. He's kind of not wrong, to be fair. Yeah. The thing about Diaboramon is when I said Omnimon, Omnimon is not winning everything, but it sure as shit gatekeeps everything. And the you, thing with Diaboromon, Diaboromon does have a top in BT17. I will not mix this up. It has a top in BT17. It was in a 3v3. Because it had a better chance of dodging on Mimon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real. So um, there are layers to it where I think the deck is very good. But like comparatively speaking, if you just have mm -hmm. one bad matchup against like the... It's like, why would you play a Pokemon deck that loses to Charizard? <laughs> Some also, kid's going to have Charizard. Also, also, also. I forgot about um, the other uh, card that came out in BT17 that makes, um, you know, that sells bricks and moves blocks is the promo uh, Flame Dramon. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> that card's okay. crazy. Talk to, him. I got, Talk to him. I got some lists for you guys if you want, but it's the, the thing no, with the Flame This card is like everything I think Andrew like ever wanted in terms of like 
it was like we've we've mentioned it on the show, like people made fun of me for going, we should put raid retail on the flame drum on. And they were like, no, nah, that's fucking stupid. What are you talking about? Then they put raid security burn on, and I'm like, retail sounds pretty good now, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, so you never should have had a you, purple. Are you going to I feel like you're gonna roleplay a little bit and you're gonna play like an eight flame drum on deck, aren't you? With like Crimson There will be Boys? more than four, that's for sure. Well, but, uh, well no, okay. there's currently so only you... sorry, no, I meant like not four. But, I'm at eight flame drum yeah. yeah, yeah. I might the, not go as far as eight, but there will definitely be more than four flame drum Okay, so like the thing, the thing with this is this nightmare is like the red Vmon that gives you two k plus the one k from the Demi Vmon is plus like the plus the three k from from the BT8 flame drum itself. Yeah. Is like this dude is actually swinging at eleven k as a level four. He will be getting at least one of the fire rockets to go through. Dude, it's so and funny as well because we we were talking about like. What if you put lightning blade on it and this motherfucker was just running in with piercing? So like after he gets the security burn, then he swings for two checks with like extra things. It's like, yeah, what if we did just run it down with like the charcuterie board of just like extra random one cost <laughs> options? It's also the, like, the um, BT8 yeah. armor options are fucking foul, bro. Like it's lightning also, blade, no, fire rocket. No, armor texture, right? Because then you swing, yeah. gain DP, and then armor texture, unsuspend, and then raid into whatever you want after you've gained the DP. So and you're actually fucking clearing rating. shit. Yeah. I would love to see it take off. I think yeah, thus I far in the format, I've just posted three links in our pod chat. So you no, guys can this, is, this would be like an armor rush ass deck. Like this is like Andrew's yeah. like fucking yeah. like dream of like four fire rocket, eight flame drum months, maybe a crystal. The, the, the thing that messes me up though is because you're raiding into something and you're bouncing the security card, there is almost no, it's the most aggressive flame drum on and like therefore the most aggressive armor that you can make without ever running out and like worrying about losing your armor purge so the reason this card has taken off i mean obviously it costs two is incredible but what it really does that busts me up is they swing they lift up the security they remove some shitter for it and then you go okay awakening of the gold digizoid and you like low pass them to two and there's nothing that you can do from there there's nothing left in the game so I am a big fan. I uh, I think there's a lot of like pretty heinous stuff you can oh, also, get away uh, with. Scrolled past really quickly there. It is a red. It's an extra color for heavens. Yeah. Yeah, it is also a. Yeah. It's one of the things that was really interesting. It being 5k base, very similarly to Lydramon, is one of those ones where you can throw it at something, expecting it to purge into the Magnamon that you then wanted to play. So like, there's a real possibility that something like EX1. Uh, Especially if you're going specifically for like the Flame Drummond burn, the EX1 um, Vmon might start getting more use because you can reliably swing that shitter in and then turn it into a two cost Magnamon and then Awakening to become unstoppable would mm -hmm. be like a real like line of play that you could abuse. Also, it not being a when digivolving, uh, similarly to Flame Drummond in the current format, is if you are having to play in the back on an off turn. You don't feel that bad about evolving this over a jamming V or a, you know BT sixteen BT twelve. Obviously, yeah, losing the one memory on promo V kind of sucks, but like being able to evolve for two in the back guilt free and then still get your like your turn or when attacking effects on the flame Drummond is really really cool. So I mean, I've seen lists that run this at two. I think there's one that runs it at three. This one's at one. It's part of the other reason that this card does so much is that like the facilitation of getting the colors down like Harry mentioned matters a lot but part of that is scramble and it makes like i, I don't want to we talk about ban list stuff continually here on the show so we don't want to make a whole thing about it but one of the things that i think as they get more and more cards printed that do sh funny revival shenanigans like a scramble is that like y'all heaven's judgment ain't making it to christmas <laughs> there's just <laughs> no way like if you can scramble and put back a two color blue red vmon onto play and then heaven's judgment somebody for their entire life savings. There's just no shot. I'm cool with that. I, no, that card's mm, toast. Shut up, bug. That card's toast. What do you mean? I lose to it. Yeah, well, that's it... what I'm saying. You're, you're like, yeah, bro. Take the fucking take the removal spell out, and I'm like, hmm. Right, but I do legit think Magnamon. No, yeah, Heaven's Judgment. Plenty of young. counters. Heaven's if Judgment you don't. probably was missing. Like, it probably could have been dual color and been like if you have a thing with lop or terrier in its sources or a tamer with henry susie in its name ignore color requirement instead of yeah bro this is a dual color yellow green option 
The only problem but with making it two it's color, mono color either side. If you made it two color, you'd have the very real problem where you got to remember, like BT eight Vmon searches two color cards. Could you yes, imagine if you, you to, if, if if you then have to fucking ha control Lydramon and Magnamon to cast Heaven's Judgment? Yeah, sure, fucking go for it. Who gives a shit? At that point, you could probably control fucking red, purple, pile. What's it called? Red, purple, flame, Dramon, and a Magnamon, and I can cast Chaos Degree. Be my fucking guest. Yeah, I mean, you just have a Magnamon plus a Daiken, and it's like, ah, my color sources. Problem that's solved. A lot, that's a lot better than a single fucking Magnamon. Yeah, Magnamon yeah. or Lydramon. Remember, Magnamon it's on and green. Magnamon not Magnamon. It's, Lydramon is just on green, so like, you scramble back yeah. a promo Vmon, you are evolving for one, and then going one, clear the board. Casting judgment, yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah, nice. It's Big fan. Yeah. So yeah. these cards, nice yeah. and balanced. Oh yeah, and also probably that's the other one about uh, what's it called? Heavens. They really probably could have pushed it a little less. It probably could have not been. 6 6K. base, then 6 per color. It probably could have just been Four? 5 six. per color. I mean, five. I think five is no. I just don't think it oh, should cast by default. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I don't think the six. I don't think the free six at the start could be there. I think if you had dual color, then it could be like you could make the number bigger at that point. Then you could make it so it's like if you have a dual color, it's now like fourteen or something. So it's like one cheaper than yellow. Uh, it's like the problem with yellow is that like a twelve k shrink for yellow for modern yellow. Yeah, but isn't modern enough? yellow isn't playing. Modern yellow isn't playing Heaven's Judgment. Heaven's Judgment isn't a yellow card. It's like a weird dual color card. Yeah, it's like, a green like, card. The, the pure yellow deck. Speaking, yeah, speaking of modern deck. yellow, though, holy lord, I, we won't gotta talk about it long. But if we're gonna talk about what they're gonna give yellow instead of Judgment, y'all read Noble Family Arts. No. That, that is the card, dude. The, oh my. The Sandrion option. Yeah. Is, uh, woo, five five card, memory yeah. main. One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus six. Then, if there are three or more Digimon, not on anybody's side of the field, just if there's three of them, I uh, increase the DP reduction by minus six. Oh, so you yes. Use this. Boom. Uh, dude, th th this is a Terry <laughs> ass card <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. I, I got Terry live reaction at work. He was like, hmm, yeah, so like, you know, this is like uh, a Spiral Masquerade and, you know, Spiral is probably still better. And then like two seconds later, uh, Tom put in the chat, uh, it doesn't specify like controlling, yours or your opponents. it doesn't, yeah, yours or your opponents. And then Terry like, oh, yeah, this is probably a lot Oh, better. he's going to minus six, three things on his board and somehow go positive off it. I can feel it. Yeah, this card very sick. I am the one deck I think immediately will probably hit the ground running with this is that this is like Numimon's new stupid security card. Um, well, Numi doesn't play options. They don't even play Heavens right now. Uh, yeah. They go back and forth in yeah, seventeen. Yeah, the actual, they go back the and forth in seventeen. The actual problem there is like unironically color requirement. Like the best Numimons are Garamon and Numi X. And yeah, but all the ones they play. The it's free like floating like, ones are good. Man. Yeah, I was thinking this is like uh, this is kind of like probably something you can get away with as a removal spell in Sakuya. Yeah, this is. Oh yeah, it'll if, definitely... go, if Kuzuha plays like you know Kuzuha plays out of body, then you evolve into Sakuya. Sakuya free casts this. It's like or okay. made mode. yeah, made mode, made mode, 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 mode playing oh. this is unbelievable. Yeah, this or is Kuzuha. a four of in Kuzuha piles like easy. You yeah. just uh... <laughs> see you later, bozo. Yeah. Big fan of this card. We don't. I gotta talk about. Maybe we'll do a starter deck thing when we have all the starter deck cards. So if you want to see that, right. let us know in the comments. Sandrionmon and Chaperomon, please do not say recover plus one. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll make a. I'll. I'll hold Andrew and Marthu to this later. But when, when the final reveals have been made and we have all of the starter deck cards out, we'll have Harry back on the show and we'll do an episode where we talk about the structure. Uh, probably. Uh, surely, I was gonna say. Surely that's better for Terry to be on here if you want to talk about yellow. Because like, I'm gonna yeah. be excited for it. But Terry's excited. Excited about yellow, Terrence, but how else I'm are we gonna get footage? How else are we gonna get footage of you and Tobu Catmon in the same place at the same time? Hey, I, Andrew, that is a good point. Andrew, need you to close the tab. Andrew, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about the starter deck stuff later. I know Marcio has a thousand things he wants to say, but people are gonna have to show up to the video and give us the clicks on that one later. Um, y'all, I think that's a lot of BT17 we've been talking about. There's plenty more to say, but it's a pretty crazy we, format. We, we really haven't spoken about Miraculous. Like, I, I kind of like that we haven't, but we really haven't spoke. Like, I want to uh, talk about had, Miraculous Ultimate Night, or the fuck it's called. If you want to get, I'll tell you what, I'll look up the clock. If you want to talk for week? five minutes, we gave oh, Jambo, last week? yeah, Jambo talked about it a oh, little bit. Oh, no, okay, never mind, you're good then. I, like, I, I, I just, 
Jambo <laughs> was. I keep fucking reading and going, bro. What are we gonna do? Jambo was more mad about the hybrid one, which very fair. Um, oh, by the way, but, speaking of which, uh, yeah. fucking invest in stonks right now. Uh, Ancient protectors is an SOC card. Carry on with your day. He said it was a yellow hybrid card, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, it is that a yellow too, hybrid. But like, card. yeah, Andrew, the look, the look on your face there. Uh, it's tamer or did you want with hybrid traits? Uh, what's it called? Tamer uh, with inherit. Yeah, if you have a tamer with a, with an inherit, you can ignore the color requirements. It's like, well, yeah. you have a tamer, ignore color requirements, and then um, it's returning. Return a Digimon with the hybrid trait so you can get your Sephiroth Mon back, and then it cheats out a Tamer with an Inherit. They really didn't fucking think very well about these, like, Tamers with the Inherit. Yeah, yeah, the, the, like, the, it's the fucking, um, Nemo. what are they called? No, 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 no. The, uh, what's the show? Not the show, the light novel called. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Seekers. 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 All the Seekers Tamers just threw a fucking wrench into, like, the... All the future um, hybrid support just has yeah. to acknowledge that it's th these guys are gonna steal it. You yeah. know what the funniest one is? Okay, so, like, currently it's okay, because the tags that the Mind Link Tamers work with are, yeah, like, they own, they're all Digi exclusive. Police, like, Digipolice, SOC, and then, like, Pulsemon in text, uh, Dark Animal, Nume, Monze, uh, what's the last ones? Uh, oh, and then the 2X Antibody Mind Links. So it's like, those are like the full list of keywords that you can mind link with. So currently there's no overlap between hybrids and mind link tamers, but like, I'm not saying I can't remember if all of the purple hybrids are not dark animals. No, they're I'm all saying, hybrids. Are they all hybrid? No, because yeah, they're all hybrids. Is that a different part of the, isn't that a different part of the box? Uh, oh, you mean as a level? Yeah, no, because it's, it, no, it's not level. Um, It's where, it's it's like how a Goonimon's a fucking wizard. Oh, like as a wizard, yeah. Yeah. Also, big, big ups, big ups, I can, bro, big ups, I cast fist. <laughs> bro really said fireball. It's pretty tight. Uh, anyways, yeah. Um, I was actually just looking at it, the bio the, the merge movie. tamers I thought for a second had inherits, no. but no, they engaged nope. the neurons for a couple of Not seconds before yet. designing those cars. You've got yeah, two to cut to all, The bio merge that. tamers instead all do a thing when they merge, so Takano gives saying, DP, Henry gives Russian, it? Rika adds back a plugin. Okay, what the fuck would Rio have then? Uh, oh, I've so no, no, no yeah, yeah. He's been he's been left no, out of the dark no, for so actually, long. You know the actual evil. probable answer is it's a black card, Marcio. It's just gonna give you protection for a turn. Unaffected or like can be DP minus. I mean, one in current, of, in one current of year, pre, yeah. one of Black's premium protections will be given to you for a turn. Yeah, in current year, you'll get like you'll complete, complete immunity to options or complete immunity to tamers, and then it'll be re to options yeah, and, and then yeah, it would be tight, right? Because then it's Rio and a Justimon as a fusion throwing hands with a Digimon, like that's more interesting. Could you it imagine? Will happen. You will get the Digimon. Could you imagine you get like a Just the X please. as well? No, you get a Just oh, the X that oh. like checks for every Tamer oh. you have and Tamer in the sources. So that way, when you go minus one off the mind, like yeah. the, the bio merge, the bio you're still bio. just like the thing yeah, is, if you look it. at if you look at the EX two stuff, I'm gonna cream. If you look at the EX two stuff, the Rio is this weird card where like conceptually Rio it sucks. It, no, it's super salvageable if they commit to it. Like, if they just want to make that deck, a thousand Rios show up, and then you've got a Justimon that does, like, 19 unsuspends. So okay, you, know, you, know, you know what would be actually fucking funny? I, at yeah. this point, make, you know the the level four, the level, is it level four, level two? It's like, tech, check the top cards, add as many Black Tamers as possible. Yes, make, They should make a Cyber Dramon that is just on Evolve, play as many Rios from your hand as possible. That yeah, would probably. actually salvage like, like the Like imagine like literally Strike evolve and then you play three of the searcher Rio and it's like alright, this one gets crit arm, this one gets axle arm, this one gets fucking I can't well, I mean, blitz arm. To be like, fair, you, that's not as yeah, possible, but that, that is what the ace does. The ace is spit Rio out, he'll do his search, and then you do digivolve something. Yeah, but like my problem with the ace okay, on paper, Cyber Jamon Ace. Why, why are we Justimon coping? I feel like because Gallimon won, we're now beating the fucking next dead horse in the line. So we're just... Hey man, we got two, what's it called? Two Tamers advanced deck sets in a row and only one of the bio merge kids is missing. Uh, we haven't okay. had a black advanced deck set yet. This and card if gives, at and if first... you, I don't have to get it. I think this card's fine. It's I got mean... very defined niches and it has tops with, uh, with D-Brigade. So imagine what happens when it gets to be tribal. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, the first one. With D Brigade. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's got Toxic Brigade because there is no other deck for it yet. But the minute they provide better search cards than generic for searching Drummonds in black, you'll get this. You'll get Mono Drummond, Strike well, Drummond, Cyber Drummond. For what's worth, right? If we're doing um, hybrids in BT18, that means that like it will be blue, yellow, green, uh, red. So black is up for grabs again. Nah, blocks, which blocks the trains. Trains, yeah, or you get like Gigasmon, like a playable Gigasmon. Yeah, actually, it's actually going to be Black Hybrid or the fucking. Trains. Could you imagine they just heal turn I, and no? But I, you play this in a Black Hybrid deck, no matter what. No, yeah. it's not. It's not the fucking trains. If they're going it's, to, it's, if they're going to give me Cyber it's, Ace, it's, it's I'm trains. telling you now. Gra it's Grand turn Local us, Mon. Turn us into a fucking TikTok right now, into a YouTube short, right? Okay, if. They want to commit to fucking just Yvonne. You know, we, we got Rika. Henry got his bio merch. It has to be BT-18. It has to be BT-18. Fuck it. Give Rio a, an ESS so at least he can be using, like, black hybrid, you know? Ooh. Keep it semi-generic. Why around. would it be? It, it'll just be, like, 19 or 20. Like, we, those are the only sets we don't have confirmation on themes for yet, but we know EX6 and 18 are, like, tamers. Oh, for BT-7. They're like, okay, we'll do the hybrids. And then they just started doing X antibody for black. What well, is snuck in? That's what I'm saying, right? They'll just do BT7 again, but this time it's for Justy Mon. What if Rio was just right, an though, Ori you can BT7 inherit? again and it's just another Gora. No, shut up. I hate you. <laughs> Wait, what? Pick up your Rios now. They're like five no, euros. No, stop fucking. No Market Watch Marcio for Rio. No, no Market Watch Marcio for EX2 Rio. That card is not worth the envelope you will get it in. What, what if mean? a new Rio with the bio merge just like. End of attack, unsuspend. Yes, that's fine. I'll take that. If your name is timing? Justin Mon. Doesn't that, doesn't that miss timing with the Justy stuff? Mm, no. Is, you may just, unsuspend. Justy's is when attacking, I'm pretty sure. Or like, you okay, you may mind. unsuspend. Just add the word. The, add, add you the may word unsuspend. May, got it. Yeah, there you go. Or you well, can just use one of you on your first attack, just when attacking, be gigantic. End of attack, spend, do it again. one memory. We still have not had a <laughs> one. one. No, we still have actually, not had. No, hang on. He actually, hang on. He is right. The ESS should just be when this Digimon would evolve into a thing with Justy and its name reduced the cost by one. Guys, Rio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zero like, cost we... mode change? No. Yes. No, because the mode change. No, the mode changes don't cost one, Andrew. They cost two per mode they, change. It, it, no, sorry. No, they cost one to mode change and two to go to, into the next one when attacking. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's like a one cost reduction on two evolutions there would make it cost one to mode change, not three. All right, yeah, For you got loop, it. anyway. Yeah, like, like there should be a card that's like when you will I... adjust, you reduce it. Here's the thing, you know, on a despite, despite all of the continuous waves of support that some decks have had, there still off. there still isn't a BT Remember set themed on Tamers. A there BT still isn't. One. Oh, on Tamer, right? Yeah, it's only yeah it's there's only still no ESS. Tamer's BT set. Some people were like, haha, BT17 is a Tamer set because it has uh, Gilmon, uh, Terriermon, and Renamon in it. But it's like, no, it's the movie set. They're just all in a movie. Um, but we literally we literally still don't have a BT set for Season 3. There are now going to be two for Frontiers, uh, three for O2, and three for Adventure, and what's a couple the, for the sorry, reboot. Wait, 16, 8, and then what's the other one for O2? Uh, BT three. Oh, oh, the fucking dragon mode first set. Yeah, oh, yeah. I guess that did. I guess that did also have um Davis. It it. <laughs> Not Davis. I was gonna say um, Silphy and Shock. Yeah, yeah. The old bad one. The old Silphy and old Shock. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll give you that. So yeah. my, my point also, being, like, secret war Greymon actually, or secret yeah, a black war Greymon, Yeah. Wait. Uh, but no, no, he wasn't that. How many man. EX sets? Because obviously EX2, but for some reason, Tamers feels like they've had two EX sets that are just theirs. They've only had the one. So Tamers' is weird thing is that it's had no, two advanced. EX4. It's had, EX4. Tamers, has had, Tamers has had three structured acts. That's based on the V-Pet. No, but like, you have Kuzuha, you alternate have being, Yeah, because alternate being is based on V-Pet lines. All the, it's like how the the first okay, one was Draconic Roar. I actually, I actually am willing really to hard. I'm actually willing to give them that because, like, that's like saying that um that Alter S actually Alter S is an adventure is an adventure one set because Alter S was in the reboot. Uh, also, like the Leomon stuff in EX Five isn't Jerry support; it's a different canon for that Digimon. Yeah, that, actually, dies, that's though. the best comparison. Still no, but yeah, Hyper Lander EX Four is technically a Tamer set. 
Okay, sure. We still haven't had out BT Tamers set, where real no, lines yes. and real amounts no, of support. Tamers is weird thing. So, is three, three structured X, two EX sets, and then, like, Takato falling into random core sets. Cause he's in, yeah, because he's in movies and specials. Specials. It's literally, yeah. like, uh, the the meme of, like, the dude biting the metal, popping the champagne. It's, like, Tamers. Yeah. But it's, like, meanwhile, it's, like, <laughs> oh, two, oh, one. One, and then it's Tamers. And, and then somehow, 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 Frontiers. Somehow, frontiers. somehow it's Frontiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah hey, frontiers I don't want to be that there. guy. Can we take a moment, moment of your time to talk about the fact that they're still not, they've still yet to print a bad Takuya Kamara, as you were, gentlemen? I mean, yeah. The no, hybrid. Sorry. Uh oh. Did something. did the hybrid mechanic? It, it's like, is there any question that hybrids aren't the best thing ever in the Digimon TCG? Like individual card quality, they aren't the strongest mechanic in the entire game. Uh, they have the same evolving on a tamer card that is completely uninteractable for a turn isn't the best thing you could do with a Digimon card. Well, you can. Like all them. all you tamers are better than all level threes. You turn, you can turn them sideways now. There's yes, actually okay, brother, I would give brother, I would give you that, but ever since BT14, the start of main phase rookies are starting oh, to sure. test that they are, theory. They are very good. Like, I hear what you're saying, but TK is not better than Hadamon. Yeah, you know, you're right. That's true. You got me there. So yeah, I don't know. I think TK is very good a couple Half the reason Takuya is oh, so yeah, good is because wow, he's a safe a red Digimon. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason yeah, they keep printing like Takuya's I mean, I, I guess they're still printing Flame Germons, but like the Flamesher one is like, it comes free with your Takuya. Okay, yep. <laughs> okay but your what's Xbox. the next Glydramon gonna do? Because, you know, if if we got a new Flame, the, the, there has to be a new Lydramon. I'm gonna right? be I mean, real with you, Lydramon is the have... other armor that Davis has. Surely this one can just be wow. all of us. No, but wow. he's right, right? Like, Magnamon's in the movies and Flamesher on the t-shirts, so where the hell does Lydramon go? Because he wasn't on my They're lunchbox. They're the same! They're Ly like the two guys! No, Lydramon nah, was used as a Lydramon? transport vehicle, bro. Yeah, okay, yeah Dig like, you don't think Dig Digmon and Submarimon did not go to the same cookouts, bro. Yeah, yeah it's a rough time. Lydramon was in the OT movie, I forgot, yeah. Yeah, dude, well. he fights the- he fights yeah. Wendigomon. And then wow. I run around, you know, <laughs> come on. And run around continue. Yeah. Lydramon's in the movie too. He drives them out to the middle of California. Yeah, wow. he, he <laughs> is just... I would just... not take Lydramon slander. Oh, well, there's, it's not even said there he looks there's, cool. there's your answer on what the next Lydramon does. It plays Davis. Oh, you know yeah. what? <laughs> if you have yeah, no Lydram Davis. There you go. Lydramon is if you don't have a tamer with Davis in its name, play one. Suddenly nah, Ken gets a whole Davis lot no better. What. Hang on, shut up. <laughs> let, let him play Davis no matter what. You have to risk literally, when, you, attacking, when attacking, play Davis. If you were to believe the Imperials players, and they're all of their like low tier OS outs, oh, that would also actually that's great. the wait, only wait. thing they're missing, which is that they don't free play Tamers. Actually, they wait, do wait. have an ace that free plays Tamers, but they don't think it counts. Actually, wait, that is a really good point. The Ledger one as well would then actually be, they would, you could finally loop back full circle and be Imperial support because it would still be the green blue thing. Wait, could you imagine you play BT8 Daiken and then you, after it, armor purges down because it's Lydramon and will always die in security. You just then go into Flamedramon for what? Yeah. <laughs> go. Did you see my vision? <laughs> I would, I would, I'm just glad it's armor. That's, That's all I'm saying. All intentional. If they keep printing crazy well, armor uh, cards, I'm there. It takes all the memory. Also, as long as they keep printing crazy armor cards that aren't just more Magnamon, I'm really yeah, there. Yes. That's the thing as well. it's like, I, I was talking to someone about this. You can write whatever the fuck you want on a Vimon armor as long as its name's not Magnamon. I want them to get to a point where the armor players have to legitimately consider why they're not on Sethmon. Like, I want them to be oh, like, yeah, What's, shit, what is Vimon's fifth best armor that isn't called Magnamon? Dude, I remember when the days were like, Yeah, you could run a one of Wholesomon. It's trash, but it's an armor. And it's like, yeah. No. I will not. I'll just that. play my twelve. Eventually, my twelve. The could Bandai could convince me of Patamon again if they double down on Pippismon support. That's all I'm you saying. To, you gotta die. <laughs> if they consider other ways to not just make Puke Angel Heal Pile do something interesting, I'm there, bro. What's funny is I was watching that video today because it came out publicly for the the squad. The I actually the, have that on my watch later list. It's the first half of a two part armor video. So uh. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys want to invest hear more in about sheep, <laughs> invest in Sheepmon stocks. It's, it's like the, the one... worst. It's like the worst green card you've ever read in your entire life. Is this our favorites or our 
This one is us going through the evolution column and finding oh, yeah. just yeah. just going through design. So if yeah, if you you like us talking about armors and you want a like twenty minute boco, uh, you should you should go look at that. And then if you want the part two, where we're gonna talk about uh which armor we would put in a locker, um, <laughs> yeah, you should. Join the it's, it's one of the first times we all unilaterally agreed on something. It was beautiful. We all did have a least favorite armor. Yeah, like we did fight some cases, but as it as it went further on, there was a clear like we, I think we all know who's getting put in the locker. But yeah, this was this times. was fun. Uh, it isn't it isn't the ferret with the claws, is it? I like him. No, Prairie Mon made a pass, but you might have to I watch for more info. I mean, you uh, actually have access to about. it now. I do actually have access to it. I fucking finally started paying more money for the channel member. But yeah, I appreciate uh, everyone that's been watching. I mean, this one's actually been getting some traction. Um, but yeah, Boko in general, it it's something that is fun. Um, we will be doing them, and they will be coming out more frequently ish. Ish. We record them after every single thing, usually without Marcio. Digimon Smash or well, Pass when? L lately, it's been. Have you seen Digimon Smash your Pass, bro? The Royal Knights all have pinchable waists for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, you cannot stop me from dicking the Omni. You can try. Fulfilling. I am not fulfilling Lord Nightmon's like fantasy. Yeah, that's all he wants. <laughs> I want like Lord Nightmon, oh, and it's dead. like Lord Nightmon season five, and then Lord Nightmon in other media. <laughs> <laughs> season four, and season think... five, Lord Nightmon are two different people. <laughs> I think everyone resonated with the fact that uh, Leopardmon being like biracial, biracial. light scale, yeah, like, funniest biracial. joke in that whole video. Yeah. yeah thank, like, by the way, thank you for being the vessel for my gag about Jessmon get using it, uh, being given it as a learning opportunity. Dude, it's, appreciate it. That Dude, video was that, that video was I so funny. That. Yeah, I rewatched that. I thought it was so funny that the only one, the only dissent in the entire idea was that like Saf was like. Oh yeah, Gankumon is the Mexican that can say it. That does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcio. <laughs> so I like it was funny. like, all right, gang, I got the tier list. Marcio immediately like Gankumon can say it. <laughs> it was like the first thought. First thought. It was crazy as well because like that one I was seeing like some people like when the first post came out they were like, hey, what the hell's happening with Digimon? I'm like, hey, like trust, we cooked. And then the video using comes out. Using 13 Alpha as the thumbnail, fucking take the pass, my son is crazy. Oh, we like making Boko. Bro, bro did not experience a racism from mushrooms for this shit. <laughs> we like making Boko where we can centralize it all in takes. And, you know, sometimes making content about having takes is kind of an exciting prospect. And if you're Damn. new to the channel, welcome to Memgage the hear? Room, a segment I that I pull out of the closet Marcia, every you, week. Marcia, do you hear that? Like a, like a two a two wheeled vehicle, like a like a like a Segway. <laughs> I you know that's the funny back thing. In my country. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you can use Segways. Real? I'm so sorry to the Portuguese viewing audience. I didn't know better. Wait, no, Next, I, I will. No, fuck! I can use segways with hoverboards. That's why he <laughs> called you <laughs> segways. <laughs> Alright, that's the end like, of the stream. Bye, everyone. I, hey, listen, I don't think we've ever had misplay for game fan art, but I'm gonna make a request really quick. Andrew, can I get the me cam? Alright, you got it, Chief. I want fan art of all of us falling off of a hoverboard, and I want it in my inbox by the time we put another episode out. <laughs> if I don't watch, I want a picture of, like, me and Andrew and Marcio on our asses at the bottom of a staircase, Digimon cards everywhere, and a hoverboard. That's all I want. I went X3 at Locals, and all I got was this shitty meme about a hoverboard. Perfect. Anyway, I did a segue. Y'all want to play it's, Memory? It's Sorry. It's X4 now. It's X4 Memory. now. X4. X4. Choo, 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 choo. I'm going to X4 hey, you two into the Who's ready to go, ready to go with X4 on getting the correct takes on who the Sussamugus imposter is? Oh, oh well, hang on. It, it's, a, it's exciting we have Harry. Oh, yeah. Memory gauge the room. Uh, it's, it's, you're excited <laughs> to have... Well, there you go. Someone remix that. There's your it, I'm really excited to have Harry here because Harry offered very crisp, very um, succinct feedback on our last Andrew, appearance. you can't fucking read. <laughs> correct. <laughs> So, I want to reiterate that we're all here, we're now all playing for the second place role as Jamie Conquest. Shoutouts to Conquest Creations Orange. over on, yeah, find him on Etsy. Conquest Collectibles, but we were close. Collectibles. Oops, I screwed it up. I should have written it down. 
I looked it up on my phone before I started the segue and forgot because we made a joke about fan art. <laughs> anyway, uh, shout out to Jamie for being the champion. But if you've never played Memory Gauge the Room, this is where you, the live viewing audience, has a chance to participate. These folks here, as I click the go button on my little drawing straws robot. Oh, excellent. Uh, these three folks are about to receive instructions from me in their DMs. Uh, they will be issued these instructions because what they're going to receive next is a statement that they will have to assess as part of the Digimon TCG. So these statements can be things as generic as there are too many Greymons in the Digimon TCG to as kind of like open-ended and like uh, kind of non-time specific as I know what the best deck of the next format will be. Uh, and so their idea will be to deceive you, the live viewing audience. If you do not know what we're talking about, Essentially, what we're doing is two truths and a lie. One of these guys is lying to you, and your job will be to figure out who it is by wagering your channel points. Um, I lost the fucking house. I'm very excited for you guys. I've put together some bangers this week. Thanks, as always, to folks sending us M4G takes. Uh, we got the form somewhere. Andrew usually puts them in the description. So if you see this on YouTube, fill it up. Yeah, Thanks. I need to compile. And if this is the... attached. And Wait. if this is attached to the YouTube video where Andrew didn't know how the fucking game worked last week, then great. This segues beautifully. Yeah, I think mad. this this is week two of the compilation ones. Uh, so I'm going to kill past Andrew now. Goodbye. Oh, that'll be a really vindicating YouTube viewing experience. Is like the comments will be like, "Wow, he just really griefed that game," and then like five minutes the later, transition Harry, of, yeah, Harry so Harry Andrew griefed this game. <laughs> Yeah, the the funniest thing about it is like I I catch flag for slightly griefing the game whilst Orange did get a free pass. No, because Jamie was instructed to grief the game. No, that but, was the thing. Yeah, but no, he was still supposed to lie, not just well, to try. Yeah, he, he his version of lying is to simply never address the question. Like well, that's your I, version of the truth, apparently. No, I got most of the Jamie, words correct. There were too many Jamie and statements. Did. Brother, Jamie shall we just move on to the first prompt before I choke slam Andrew through a webcam? Oh, this is hype. I'm into it. I'm so mad. No, no, Jamie just like made up a new truth. You guys don't get it. Yeah, yeah. We, we hey, Jamie, reason. Jamie is, he, God bless that boy. He was so insecure in the lying he was doing, he decided there was an orange color in Digimon. Like he was just so untethered from how to play it out cool. It was just Alas. Uh, Memgage the Room is a game where these three folks have all already now received their instructions in their DMs. If you guys triple check to confirm that you know what you're supposed to do. Uh, uh, and for, Are we perfect. doing uh, three? Uh, I've refreshed the bank, baby. We have nine. Oh, no, I meant we game. have three uh, thingies for the countdown. Uh, is it three minutes? Three. Yeah, yeah, three minutes was fine. Okay. I realize I need to put this in. I set it up to be on all the scenes, but as a result of doing that, I did not set like a thing to unhide it. So while you get that ready, I'm going to give you guys the statement ahead of time so that we have the no minor technical difficulties aside, it'll all be nice and smooth. But your guys' statement today are, promo cards are acceptably powerful given their availability. The statement is, promo cards are acceptably powerful given their availability. So, again, just to remind the viewing audience, who will be wagering channel points on this in a moment, one of these three folks will be lying about their opinion on that statement. All right, so, I have fixed it. We're ready to go. My HDMI cable has just exploded, and my monitor is now just showing me the no signal page. So I am blue hairy now. <laughs> awesome. Hairy. We can still I'm see just going to cut the second monitor now. There we go. Unlucky HDMI cable. Um, are you ready, Andrew? <sighs> Uh, let me just look at Discord, because I'll be honest, I have not been thinking for the past couple of minutes. I'll give you guys one. Well, how about we start from the bottom this time? How does that sound? Let's mix up the game a little bit. The the biggest hater of <laughs> Memgage the Room now gets to come in and be the Memgage. Maybe on the other side of the coin, more difficult. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Are you ready for the statement one more time, H? Uh, hit me with it one more time, and then I think I'm ready to go. All right, I have my timer ready to go, so I will let Andrew add his too. But Harry, the statement you will be responding to is, promo cards are acceptably powerful given their availability. So I'm going to count you down. Y'all set? Three minutes? Yep. Right. No, not not just for you, oh, sorry. One each, got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. that was like, I was like, I don't think I got three minutes in me, but I think I got a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> one set. Let me just... Okay. Five, one, two, 
Let's script them. I'm ready to go whenever. Let me know when there's a timer visible for people to go, or if we're just going off of you will give me my timer. Okay, the timer is ready to go. All right, so I'll count you both in for you to press play, Andrew. You ready? All right. Yep. All right, so three, two, one, go. I think promos are acceptably powerful given their availability. It's like, I, I like that they are an incentive to go to like events and stuff. It's like, if you think about the O2 like movie promos, the decks in BC16 are like, you know, you get one one of each of the, the DNA goobers, but the promos, the promos are like, they complete the set of them. So it's like Armadillo Mon and Hawkmon are both searchers. And then Patamon is like an additional searcher while Gatsumon is like an additional keyword that that archetype gains access to. Whereas like the Wormon and Vmon is like Wormon is another searcher for the archetype. But the Vmon is like a card that enables multiple archetypes while being like a like a powerful tool and like the it's an incentive to go to a locals, which I think is like a really a really good reason to make these promo cards like strong things that you have to go to things to get them. It turns out I had forty five seconds worth of dialogue. That's kind of it. No, that thanks for that. That was Harry responding to the statement: promo cards are acceptably powerful given their accessibility to our availability. Um, Marcio, you ready to go next? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, one more time. The statement you are responding to is promo cards are acceptably powerful given their availability. I'm going to count you in. So go in three, two, one, go. I don't think uh, promos are acceptably powerful considering that like some of them you can only get through either uh, entering events, which some people don't have a locals to go to, but they're willing to travel to events or box toppers, which means that if you don't have the capital to invest into a whole box, you can't get a promo, and then it's not that you even get a whole playset of the promo. So some promos you only need a couple copies, but some promos you need a full playset, which makes it really difficult for the average person to be able to get to them. And there are some like real stinkers, like off the top of my head, for example, the promo Qui-Gon is kind of gatekeeping a lot of uh, upcoming like green players, and they have to find workarounds because they this card is just really expensive because it's just a card that is not very accessible. And this isn't the first thing. Raremon is another example. It could be an anomaly, but I prefer when promos are just alt arts, and I would rather cards have more alt arts than in new cards. Perfect. That's your time. <laughs> This is going great. Wait, great work on the timer, Andrew. Yeah, it turns out uh, that OBS has a built-in Python script that they never tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> the fun of putting the show online. Of course, Andrew will also be responding to the statement, promo cards are acceptably powerful given their accessibility. Andrew, you ready to go? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, cool. Three, two, one, go. So I think the promo cards on the whole are pretty good in terms of... Uh, how accessible they are and like how powerful they are. The problem is that they're not fully consistent on how you get them. Like Marcio said, with the some of them being box toppers but being essential parts of an archetype is kind of heinous where you do get some promo cards that it's just like show up to your locals. Like the security rookies also being late doesn't help with like they are strong cards, but the time that we get them, sometimes they're a bit undertuned or underwhelming. I think if they're smart about how they do their promos they could actually kind of just fix this by making some of the strong cards, you'll go to locals cards and some of them just be your thing. I think the trainings was a great example of a strong card that is uh, like, you get one of each, but that's not enough for a thing, it encourages trading. But I think it shows that like strong cards being less readily available or you have to go out of your way to get it is like a good power balance for please buy product at, from Bandai. <laughs> that's your time. Perfect. So, now this is over to you, the live viewing audience. We have three folks who have expressed their opinion on the statement. Promo cards are acceptably powerful given their accessibility. Uh, it's now up to you to figure out which one of these guys was talking out of their asses, because somebody was lying. Um, I think this is a hot topic, because, you know, like Marcio and Andrew and Harry all said, like, it is frustrating to have some things be kind of like left out of access to players. But on the same hand, it's cool that folks show up to events and shows up to locals. So um, where do you think we're going on this one? I would love to hear the predictions because somebody was yapping, somebody was capping. All right. Yeah, then. Cool. Yeah, we'll put that. You know, I started it late, so we'll just make it a short break for this one. Perfect. 
I think that was an interesting one. You guys seem to have kind of. I like good, it. That was a good take from. Do you, oh, do we have the the people who submitted like each one, or is it like fully anonymous? Uh, we are out of ones that are either submitted but are not like too specific for something like this. Like I have people have been no, sending like, statements. Who, I meant like who submitted that take to you? That was me. I wrote that one. Oh, you wrote that one. Okay. That was there are a lot of ones here today. There are a lot of ones here today that were just things that I had been set on trying to work out how we would word them. I have others in the backlog from folks who were very kind and submitted them, but they were either a little too specific and I wanted to wait for a more appropriate week to use them or maybe a little too like narrow cast in terms of an audience, but we'll see how we go. It was one um, of those interesting ones. I think we did put on the form, like you can credit yourself if we want to yes. use them. I think especially the okay. takes one does. I think the yeah. clips one is also just so if I see you betting in chat and I know you submitted the clip, I'll find you. Um, <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. How, how are we looking on the, t the thing? I think it's done. All right. Yes, we do have the results. Andrew, would you like to share the results? Okay. Uh, this one is a full on uh, double down. Uh, people all think that it was. Our guest, Mr. DHM. Yeah, I was lying through my fucking teeth. Promos are miserable, dude. <laughs> like, this shit is so dicks. What the fuck? Why is Raremon 40 fucking Great British Pounds just so I can draw, I can get the next purple generic draw engine? Like, what the fuck, dude? It's like, yeah. the thing Andrew was saying is right, or Marcy was saying this one as well, it's like, when I go to locals, I want to open a pack and it's like, oh, Pomumon, but he looks kind of silly now and a little doofy. This was my reward for hanging out. Not, oh, I, like, purchased a box of product to Gamba a one in four to get the promo on the top of the pack that's not fucking dog shit. It's like, yeah, man, I opened a box of EX5 and my box topper promo was Prism Garrett or whatever the Hunter's option yeah, was, the... not Raremon. So now I'm like down fucking 35 pounds because i opened the bad box topper promo like it's also the, they're not the, i tried to avoid them yeah i was like i tried to avoid it when i was trying to lie because like there's zero shot i could ever talk about box topper promos without losing my goddamn mind box topper promos that are like here's a foil tama or you know like the, you know the memory boost alt arts we got from bc7's yeah. box toppers godlike perfect box topper i bought my box i got sunomon eating an ice cream peak kino i, I also just I like the full box art and opened yeah, those are sick. Like those are good box toppers. Then it's like, you know what? You know what's a dog shit box topper? A must-have engine requirement. I think uh, if they were, oh, no, you go ahead, Marcio. Oh, they're not even consistent with like the power level because, like, okay, so for a long time we just had like, there were a couple of promos that were pretty okay. Like, for example. One of the early good ones was, like, the Garuru pieces. Those were pretty good. I think those were, like, the first set of promos that were, like, oh, this card shapes... Well, technically, got a bit better a little bit later on. I think, like, one of the first really good ones was, like, Promo Pulsemon and, like, mm -hmm. the Laguni and the Lobo. Those are really good. You know, like, the Dami Dami and the Risa were pretty good. Yeah, I was just saying, that's the card I was actually going to say. I, I maybe could have brought this up and twisted the story, but, like, I actually have a personal <laughs> frustration with the promo card because, like... Sunorizamon yep. was just like the, the rookie you had to play with Gora because it was like the the thing that wasn't Dorumon that sucked. And if it was like second plus one, yeah. perfect. If you so didn't like, have um, the ancient stuff for like the original like ancient Gururumon Gabubon things too, yep. like that was it a was, layer of it. was unaccessible. Yeah. Uh, it's also then like we then had like some uh in BT9 we got like the most like important ones, which were the Sagittarius, the Alterist, Sagittarius, Akua, Alterist, yeah. Akua, even like Wizard. And then there was, like, we had some duds, some okay. And then we got, like, probably the most game-altering promo of all time, in my opinion, which was Ukomon. Ah, I'm gonna have to cut you off here. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, buddy. It might be on the questionnaire for the day. My bad. I'll, I'll, I, I will I'll say, though, yapping. though, if I'll we... If, if we got promo card... Better promo cards as tournament kit stuff like i'm happy to have alt arts and now that we're getting real alt arts that aren't just like uh ep5 is we took the background and made it the color of the card i think if we yeah. just you know maybe instead of getting three waves of security rookies we could have maybe gotten like a promo good card and then box stopper shit can go back to being meaningless alt arts mm -hmm. oh by the way i'd like to i'm gonna do this literally after all of them andrew thank you for answering the question 
I'll be honest, I was like... You answered the question. You said that you thought that it was frustrating, like, that they are an exceptional power level for the ones that are nice alt arts. That I, was answering the question. Mentally, I had, like, the pie chart of, like, how much of what I'm saying is answering the question. I was just trying to make sure that thing was as close to 50-50 as possible, because, like, none of this <laughs> was what I was... That was that was 60%. You 60% answered the question. I could walk away from that and go, Andrew likes that you can get alt arts from going to your local scene and supporting the game. Andrew dislikes that sometimes they're game determinative cards. That was a take I got from you, not, I don't know, man, structure decks. I still maintain my first <laughs> next one with question. Next yeah, question. Next question. Our next, our next statement is going to be read out right now because these guys have already been DM'd to their instructions. Check your DMs. Uh, the statement reads as follows. In the Digimon TCG, you could expect a new player to have a serious chance at beating a veteran. One more time. The statement is, in the Digimon TCG, you could expect a new player to have a serious chance at beating a veteran. I can go first on this one. Sure thing. All right, you guys ready? I'll count you in. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, Andrew. Three, two, oh, shit, one. No, I'm not. Apparently, I've lost oh, access right, to my ready. keyboard. Never, never mind. Okay, yeah, we're ready. I'm going to try to fight my HDMI cable. Right, line perfect. Those, then. Three. Two, one, go. So the card game currently has 50 cards in it. And sometimes, even after this gracious mulligan they've added in, you will just draw dog shit two times in a row and simply be unable to play the game. And it's on the new player to not throw from orbit. As we have seen, sometimes the call of the void is too much for a new player, but <laughs> they are printing some real powerful cards. And a lot of them right now, Aces, which don't cost much to slam. So if your opponent has bricked out of the ass, the veteran, sometimes they do just draw nothing and you can slam a level five because you've also drawn nothing, but your nothing costs slightly less than their nothing and therefore can tempo swing the game. Sometimes also you just make all the right decisions and hit the first check in security and lose. Not saying it happened to me twice this week, but it happened to me twice this week. But yeah, we're printing better cards, we're making them more accessible, and at the end of the day, sometimes, security is terrible, and drawing for turn does not fix the problem. That's your time. Perfect. Next up, we'll have Marcio going ahead. He'll be responding to the statement, In the Digimon TCG, you could expect a new player to have a serious chance at beating a veteran. Marcio, your time starts in 3, 2, 1, go. There is just no way I would ever lose to a new player. It's just, it just does not happen. It's not like in Yu-Gi-Oh! where, you know, like, you play on turn zero. Okay, I will open up an exception. If the new player comes to a new locals and wants to make some friends play Secon, then that player will not make any friends, and that's how they'll beat me, because I tend to play decks that just auto-lose to that style of deck. But over the course of three games, I might lose one of the games, at worst, but Digimon is a kind of game where a new player just cannot contextualize uh, how much memory the opponent needs to do some actions, so there will be a couple of turns where they'll either pass me too much memory or they won't know what my deck fully does, and they can't sort of like quantify how much memory they should not pass me, and those kinds of mistakes get super punished. Uh, also, it could be a case of if they're the one pushing the envelope, they swing into my security and something pops out, then they just lose the game. That's your time. Perfect. And once again, Marcio was responding to the statement, in the Digimon TCG, you could expect a new player to have a serious chance at being a veteran. That's the statement Harry's going to respond to in a second. You ready to go? Yep. I have right. a fucking story for this one. Three, two, one, go. I don't remember which regional it fucking was, but it was the one where I was playing Crossheart. And I sit down, and the dude across from me is like, oh, yeah, I'm here because my friend wanted me to get Digimon, at, like, prize support for entering, so I just have 50 Imperial cards that are his. And I fucking died? Like, he just resolved cards. I was, like, staring at my hand of, like Andrew said, all the fucking tamers in the universe, because it was Crossheart, but none of the guys to go with it. So I just got fucking Pyildramon to death and had to look at it like, what the fuck happened to me? And then... The follow-up, of course, is I swing with finally found a robot. Oh, yippee! <laughs> Fucking Mega Death! I don't know, like, I would like to think you can usually beat it, but, like, there is there is a non-zero chance that, like, a new player can just either win off of the fact of, like, if you're playing an aggressive deck into a deck that requires finding its pieces, you can just get smoked before you find your pieces, or lol security because new players will build decks in silly ways and you know four mega deaths four giga death and it's like oh my god i died into the moon 
That's your time. So, to our live viewing audience, these three folks have just responded to the statement in the Digimon TCG, you could expect a new player to have a serious chance at beating a veteran. Um, this is where your little detective sleuthing comes in. We need you to kind of suss out who just told you not exactly their honest opinion. I'm does that open. one um, have a source on the take? That one does not either. Okay. That one also you? Yeah. Okay. I've been cooking this week. It's good. It's okay, the YouTube Boom. video hopefully will get people to actually fill out the form that will be in the pinned comments, uh, so that way we don't them, have to do it. Please make them simple, yes, like, yes, no style, like, questions, because it means it's easier for someone to uh, genuinely formulate. No, okay, you know what I mean? I, I like, will say, Andrew, I will do... Andrew, me, and Marcio just gave you, uh, yes, a new player can win, no, a new player can't win, yes, a new player can win, so it's, like, really easy. Unless... I, give, I can retrofit them a little bit. If I change anybody's statement, I will still credit them 100%. If they give me the idea, that's where I put it from. But, like, overall, as long as people can get it to me in a comprehensible way, where, like, even if I have to Google Translate your answer, or sorry, your submission, I will do so and preserve the syntax. Just get your takes over. We need M4G takes. You know where to look. It's in the Discord. It's in the description. Y'all figure it out. Um, yeah. On-screen timer was a good idea. Thank you, Vic. Yeah, actually huge. I mean, maybe I've made the time it too big, but you know, I kind of like it. Uh, Subtleties. I, like it. I can look at. It means I can look at the screen and see where the timer's up, though. Yeah. Anyway, who was the yapper? We're still getting yeah. for some people voting. It was an interesting oh, okay, one because it was one of those ones where even if you go yes, no, yes, like you could for just be re yeah, you could be really, really like just like head ass about it. Just like no, I genuinely do believe X or Y. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like you, know, I, I you could have the OS that maybe bricking doesn't count as losing to a new player. It just doesn't count. Mm -hmm. You just, you just, you showed up and you uh, donated three points. You didn't lose to them. You lost to the deck. I also think it's interesting because there's a lot of questions about like, oh, you know, is there any you know skill expression in a card game versus other competitive mediums this is something i've seen some folks at our locals talking about and i was like i think i can think of an inflammatory way to describe this kind of yeah group. i had a take for you that i did not remember yeah I, I, go, great. I aim to displease all right Thank so you, brother this one again the results are locked in this one's a hundred double dip and it is on the contrarian were you were you no. capping I was saying that I was telling the truth. We got an if honest you're a new player. You're not taking a game off of me, unless you're playing like security bomb turbo. Well, that's mercy. I genuinely believe that. Like, sure, sometimes it's just like you know, a matchup can happen or whatever. But um, a a new player just if it, it's also because like there are so many decks that like I could be playing my pet deck and you could be playing an on paper stronger deck than mine, but if you don't know what my pet deck does. And I know what your deck does. I know exactly how much memory I can pass you. For example, that's just like on the surface level. Mm -hmm. Do we want to have the liar let himself be made available here? Who who got away with this one this round, folks? Ooh, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank Vic for reminding me that I have to be passionate when I want to look like I'm telling the truth. Yeah, no, I Marcio's right. Like, if you know how I'm the Imperial story, I added a fucking lie to that Imperial story. I did win. I lost a game, but like Marcio yeah. said. He took a game off me, and I was like, okay, he's playing Imperial just on board. I'm just going to clear it. I knew you were lying, because I remember that story, and I was like... Oh, uh, yeah, I was like, he f I died to Pyodramon, and then went, okay, I'm just... Yeah, and then, I, oh, yeah, and then I, stuck, I stuck everything in front of him. The tricks brought up a good point, though. It's like, he mentioned, where is it? Isn't lying did the same thing of me week two of attending Fanboy and at the Store Champs. So the thing there is, like, at the Store Champs, you were no longer a new player. You smoked the shit out of me. Like, you just, like, you just beat me. It was an unlucky situation for me, but you did just beat me. Wait, what? Um, and then the, the oh, store the champ. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, like, the, the new player thing, it's like, I'm leaning very heavily into this question about the, ser like, a, what is it, S has a serious chance? Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think bricking is a serious chance. Yeah. I don't think if you're like, you know, oh, they won't draw one of their 12 rookies two games in a row, and then I win. It's like, bro, the odds on that are astronomical. See, what's interesting for me is, like, Sorry, Trick. I am. Sorry. I would now consider myself an experienced player, but when I was still relatively new, I think maybe week two or week three of attending fanboy locals, I beat Marcio because he bricked. What deck were you on? You were on Grandis, and I was on Armor. Not only did no, Purge... Armor has a good matchup into 
Armor has also had a good matchup into Grendel. Okay, but I didn't know that. I was ju I just got lucky on one of I think maybe you like, got lucky. You played it well. I played game one well. Man. I got smoked game two, and game three you didn't find promo Grand, so I won. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's. I had played that matchup with Saf, and that matchup is so fucking annoying because like you have purge, so I don't get piercing. And um, I can put you sideways, but the next still play like security bombs. That matchup was just a armor favorite matchup. That's fair, but it was one of those like, oh, it's like week two, and I played defending store champ, and I won because he notably did not see the six that he needed to smoke me. I as... wasn't. I wasn't store champ at that point. No, you that was... you were the most yeah, recent. You played me in BT nine. Yeah, I saw you had a store champ. No, we, didn't, we, we didn't. We didn't have the. I won in BT ten. It was BT10 was when oh, me and Marcio okay. tried to do it with our me and Marcio took our BT9 decks to a BT10 store champ. That's why it was that's why it was the store champ where Marcio sandbagged for me because the second one he played uh he played Melga and just bricked consecutively so I didn't have to interact. No, with no, 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 I didn't brick. I got paired into Jessmon round one. Oh uh, yeah, that was it. I got paired into <laughs> skills one. paying the bills. No, I think I got paired into Tricks round one and I was like, oh my deck just cannot produce an out. You cannot produce an out to it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, also every time I beat Saf, it's because he, he just sees a handful of seven Magnemons. I go, excellent. <laughs> I mean, outskilled. Yeah, I, 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 but like the actual answer to the question, though, it's like I believe that like as a as a real like high level player in a best of three, you should be able to adapt and overcome to a bad matchup. Like, yeah, I agree. And, and, like bad bad matchup, and also I think Marcio said it's like if you know what your opponent can do with the memory gauge, like, and you actually know how their archetype works better than them then you really can dictate the flow of the game perfectly. Like, if you just, you know, no the number more. of times where a player, a number of times where players will, like, you know, oh, if I had, like, if I had one more, and then it's just, like, the it's nodding it's in my... Every single time. If only oh, I, if had I had one, if I had one more memory, and it's, like, me staring at the two-cost option and the three-cost option in my hand, I chose between and went, yeah, I'd like the three-cost option more, but the two-cost option stops me from fucking dying. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it was one of those, like, I could agree with my, like, yeah, sometimes you just double brick or see dog shit in security, but, like, as I'm starting to lean towards you know, not the new player and more the experienced player. Like, yeah, I never, I, I've, it's come to the point where I never sit down and go, yeah, I could lose to this person. Even when it they really like flip their like first day. A really, a really bad situation has to happen. And then that comes back to my mind of like, that's not a serious, like, yes, if I played, you know, if I played someone, my first security and last security could both be my Congos and then an aggro deck will never beat me. It's or like, because, I'm sorry, my bottom two securities could be Congress, and then Agra will never beat me. But like, that's not it, serious. It's because Digimon is so matchup dependent. I still remember vividly. This was like when Balfi just like started first showing up. Like, bro had Good his like Balfi. Imperial deck. He pulled like something crazy. Tom gave him like a bunch of money for the card. I don't remember what it was. Was it? What, he what pulled, he, I, so I pulled two Crimson alt Crim I pulled two alt Crimson modes that night, and then Balfi pulled a third. Yeah, and then like he basically used that to fund like yeah the machine. He gave, it, he gave me a good deal too. Bless he him. played, I think it was like in BT nine, and he played like D Brigade, and he got paired into Harry, and I had finished my game. So Balfi like started oh playing. yeah this discussion. He played like a couple rookies, and he chipped Alpha Security, and then UG Cool Boy Men Boost, and then stuff popped out, and then he was like, ah, I lost the Alpha, nothing I could have done there. And then me and Harry were like, why did you chip off him on security? You're playing deeper. Just set up, just set up five attacks. Just, just set, sorry, up, set, set up six, six set up six, six damage. Set up six damage. Uh, and it's just like, well, if people, for example, okay, Alpha Mon is a very like, you know. You gotta know it that. It's the, the explosive yeah. one. It, it's like, you get. Same with Red Hybrid, right? Like, if yeah. you know that, yeah. that's the one lesson yeah, you Yeah, if you chip Red Hybrid and double Takuya pops out, it's like, or the, the funny word, it's like Takuya and then like the Aldemon with the Inherit, like Warp Takuya and then an uh, Aldemon BT7 pops out. That's the fuckers one. It's like when people don't realize if like a Digimon popping uh, out Digimon of security. Digimon security, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the, the, the one me and Marshall and Emily always joke about is like if Oriumon is, or is, in, is in security and like, you know, if someone knows how. Yeah, first check Oryu and like then you know if someone knows how good like how Alphamon works because if they don't comment on first check Oryu then it's like okay it's time for a free sword yeah yep. no, uh, Atomic yeah. Inferno with two rookies on board is my least favorite one it's like the something that lived <laughs> and didn't float and then Atomic's like oh I'm dead like lethal yep. has magically appeared out of nowhere mm -hmm. they should make a show about guessing whether or not a situation results in lethal or a living anyways uh, you've all been sent your instructions for our third round of Memgage the Room. Uh, got kind of a heady one today. This is the one we sort of discussed. I'm worried that you three will suss each other out, but the live audience probably won't. Oh, this gosh. is one we've been discussing at Locals a little bit. 
I've never been sus. Never been sus. Mogus? Not once. Um, but Andrew, whenever you're ready, uh, I can switch this over. All right. Cool. Uh, our third prompt for Mem Gauge of the Room this week is card effects that later become keywords, thinking BT15 Modimon's Bug Blitz and Vortex, are underutilized in the TCG and that there are others that would be good fits. So one more time. It's a long one, but there's a lot to there's a lot of meat on that bone. Card effects that later become keywords like BT15 Modimon's Bug Blitz and Vortex are underutilized in the TCG, and that there are others that would be good fits. This is a big one, so I'll vamp for you guys for a second, let you guys can have a chance to think about this. Some of the others that you guys might have seen as a viewing audience, things like Evade kind of came out of a similar effect, where it's like you can kind of essentially pay a cost to ignore a deletion. Scapegoat and Decoy, sort of similar things. Scapegoat has existed in places of other things dying for them. Um, so there's a lot of interesting card space and a lot of like, you know, people like to talk about like blue flare stun, but we've never had a stun mechanic. So there's lots of things we can look at. Um, are you guys ready to roll? Yeah, I think so. All right. How about we get started with Andrew? We go back to the way things are meant to work around here. Uh, like, why do you fucking throw me under the bus for the first one, by the way? Because the transition, the, the transition would go crazy. It's like, bro, you guys were dog shit at this game. Plays immediately like, hey, yo, this shit kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. However, you uh, stepped up to the plate and it was fine. Yeah. So, and I, I get sussed out immediately, to be fair. Either way. Your time starts in three, two, one, go. I think the, the problem is with keywords is if, Sometimes right now they're a little bit obtuse because like they get printed on when they're first shown and then after that you're just expected to know what the keyword does. I think that gets even more confusing if you don't have like the backstory. Like Bug Blitz is great, but you have to know what Motimon did and then also know what Blitz is. And I think they're just like more keyword if they continue to only print a keyword for one like release of a card, then after that it's just like, hey, I hope you know what this keyword does. I think that makes Digimon a little bit less accessible. And I don't think that uh, the more complicated keywords should be just sprinkled in off of like, hey, we ran it as this, we ran it with this like set of cards, especially once they become more generic. Like Vortex is like currently in one archetype, but stuff like Fortitude and like Leomon's like respawning and siphoning off of like Leomon X is like mostly linked to an archetype where you can at least call back to it. That's your time. So that is, a, can I can I just get a yes no at the end of that really quick? Sorry, that is a you don't think it should be used more, or you think it should be used more, like more things. Ah, uh, he's out of time, guy. Yeah, I'm out of time. I just wanted to speak yes or no answer from this. Right. Hey, buddy, see that, he's out of right time. Right I'm gonna call. I'm gonna pull in my crazy. judge check really quick. Sure, sure. The yeah. show host says if I speak, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Church, when if I speak, uh... me when Cedarmon has a full text box to just say raid retaliate and does not describe what either of them means. Yeah, yeah say Verdramon do be like that. Uh, next up, of course, we've got Marcio. Marcio, are you ready to respond to the statement? Card effects that later become keywords, like BT15, Modimon's Bug Blitz, and Vortex, are underutilized in the TCG, and there are others that would be good fits. Okay. All right, cool. So timer starts in three, two, one, go. Uh, I don't think they are underutilized because I like the fact that they go through sort of sort of like an experimentation phase. So, for example, like like you said, a Modimon it first started off with pushing a concept to uh, just a type of uh, Digimon, so just insects being able to do that, and then later converting that into okay, this is now a keyword, and then we can design things around the keyword. My issue is that there are some. Uh, play styles that had already been existing that I don't think would convert well into uh, specific keywords. Say, say, for example, playing from sources, because then you'd need a play from source keyword, and then you'd need to then label that as uh, what it can play from the source. And then it would just add a lot of unnecessary like keywords to a card. And then we would just turn into Magic the Gathering, where it's just keywords. And we'll get to, say, for example, the Saber Digimon, where it's just a Digimon with two keywords, and it doesn't explain what the keywords do, and then just wasted text. And I like having text on my cards as well. Perfect. That's your time. Harry, you are now up. You will be responding to the statement, card effects that later become keywords, like BT15 Modimon's Bug Blitz and Vortex, are underutilized in the TCG, and there are others that would be good fits. 
Yep. Your time starts in three, two, one, go. So I actually want to approach this from a different point of view. Um, obviously, just having things be blocks of keywords is frustrating, but the actual advantage it then has is the documentation on keywords, not having to look up how a specific card's effect interacts with something, and instead being able to look up how the keyword interacts with something. So like one of the one of the main frustrations it's like defensive timing in Digimon because like you know some things are blockers some some things are redirecting some things are blast evolving making redirection as an example into a keyword it's like when an opponent's Digimon attacks read like keyword redirect into keyword for it's like redirect this Digimon or like Cherrymon's case redirect uh suspended Digimon so it's like stuff like that would make it a lot easier to like look up the rulings for it. It's like, oh, these cards function in a similar fashion. Obviously the thing Marcio mentioned about like Digimon just being like, I have three keywords. Answer me these riddles threes of what they do. Otherwise you can't do it. Uh, don't, don't, get to know, don't get to know what it does. But I think that's just like a promo cards versus structured deck cards. Structured deck cards could have their keywords explained. Promo uh, cards probably don't need it as that's much. That's your time. So chat. That was a bit of a heady one, but I think the three of them took it pretty well. Uh, one of them, though, talking out of their ass, not telling you exactly what they had in a serious, genuine way. Um, some genuine discussion points there about like complexity in a card game. Is it interesting for things to be overloaded with keywords? Is it just not actually helpful for new players? Or is standardization the way that you make it helpful for new players? Lots of things to think about. Um, but as is the case when you play a game of MMG Age the Room, somebody was pulling the wool over your eyes. So go, I've seen a couple of folks over in YouTube want to make sure that you're aware you can go over to twitch.tv slash KMT Elixir. You can wager channel points that you get. You got a bunch of them for clicking the follow button. That helps out a lot, helps the channel. Um, and if you do that, you can wager those channel points on probably a good gut feeling that one of them was telling you a lie. Because, you know, you've played the Digimon TCG if you're watching this. Chances are you've seen some stuff. Um, You've probably seen enough keyword soup to have a take on it. But that's our prediction time. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, what have we got? All right. So I can tell you. Also, I considered making it like a mem gauge the room, like specific overlay, like we have for Lethal or Living. And like, I guess, pull back the wall a bit. Like, I've got like F1234 for like the opening and then shift for each of those for like each post for that. And that's what I'm using. I was going to make one and then put it on alt. The problem is. I would just kill the stream every time we cut to the guest. Alt F4. Yeah. <laughs> I would just be alt F4 and going, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> so uh, that's why uh, we bro, don't have if, a special if I try one. To speak, if I try to speak, that is the right button to press. <laughs> right, we do what? have a hundred percent. Like everyone's been all in. Chat is the hive mind, and it's believing that I am the capitaur. Uh, are they right, Andrew? Uh, yeah, they would absolutely be right. I have a whole article on, like, Digimon slang, and I'm a big fan of, like, keywords and shit like that. Like, I've got a whole last thing of, like, why speak oh. the written words in the card game when you can just come up with single word things that explain an effect? New players be damned. Well, I think a lot of people like narrating the effects on their card, which is, like, not a pet peeve of mine. No, you like have to finish the rest of the sentence speaking like Ross Mara. Go on. Yeah, it's like... When did you evolve an owl place? One Digimon with the egg Santi body, a tray, a nice I... stack. Dorimon gave me one memory. Fun fact, according to the rules of Digimon, Dig uh, Dorimon will actually be able to see his own uh, effects, so he will be able to gain one memory here. And now... I thought the cutscene was, un I thought the cut scene was unskimmable. How are we going faster? I... <laughs> well, no, because he's doing like a little highlight. And then it's like oh, yeah. Althamon, the knight that is the opposite of the Omega, the fucking uh, Black Air Force, I would say machine, and it's I, just like you know, like I, I get it. You want to narrate, you want to roleplay. I get oh, it. I also want to add one point minutes. to mine because I, I, I want to get out. I was telling that uh, obviously I was telling the truth. I think keywords are fun. I also this was a part that I a part that I missed that I actually think is fun. I think Digimon's keywords are fucking adorable. Yeah, the flavors. Like, I, I think the I think the fact that Digimon's like oh, you know the the tricks jamming is. Jamming is <laughs> a dog with a gun who doesn't like. I remember I made, I made that joke and then for the oh. fucking life no, yeah, of me, I couldn't remember it. <laughs> Digimon's keywords are fucking adorable. By the way, like, like if we your guy forget. unsuspend, your guy, your guy, be, like your guy's able to block on your opponent's turn because he becomes reactive. What did they call that shit? Homie reboots. That's so I, cute. I if we this ever get jamming. 
If we ever get Rust Marrow on this show, guys, I would lose oh, my mind. That would be bro, so Bro, if we get sick. Rust Marrow on the show, you can't, like, obviously I'm, uh, you only get one guest. Thank <laughs> God. I would just be talking like a Rust Marrow video the entire time he was around. I, I love that guy. Movies. Yeah, that's the, I, I mean, we I don't get. Them. I think he just reads Digi like, yeah. the Digimon's titles off of, like, the think, yeah. Like, almost Rust all Marrow's of them have like, them. I think he's just a real-ass Digimon fan, and he does a yeah, lot of rules. great translation. If somebody, listen. If by the power of God you can get me get this clip in front of Russ Marrow, we would love to have you on love the you, show. Love you, Russ Marrow. Holy shit, that would be so. Thank you tight. for making out. Thank you for having. I, would, I have like a bad matchups in the BT13 Cup, so I could show that you can just Congo Shine Greymon three times. Love you. <laughs> I would. I would have like a thousand questions to ask the dude about all his translation work. So that would be very. Hype. Oh yeah, that too. He's also like also just like the the translation work he does for the scene is fucking unbelievable. Sometimes That's my it's better than the official translation team because Russ Marrow has never needed to have his posts. Rotted. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, keywords are fun because like looking up, like actually getting to look up interactions. Like I, I hate having to be like, how does BT fifteen zero zero three interact with BT fourteen fucking o six five? And it's like, or I could just go, how does a Digimon with raid interact in this instance? Like you can just go to the comprehensive ruling page for raid. Uh, given where we're at, fellas, I think we'll call Mem Gauge the room here at three rounds. Thank you all for wow, playing. Wow, no bonus fourth round. Well, I was thinking about maybe doing like a thing like Andrew did where I like have another YouTube video queued up or something like that. But um, we'll get to that later. Dude, just I just gotta, I gotta, one. yeah, ah, oh, that would be very fun. <laughs> just maybe something. Once a remember, week, we just Pond's get one. alt arts are kind of mid. <laughs> remember what I was saying this week about, uh, by the <laughs> well, way, we sorry. Four rounds this week. By the way, sorry, just so taken aback by Ogre Pond's alt arts being mid. Dear God, that was painful to me to hear. They're not as good as they could be. No, they're peak. That's insane. Umfi is too far from frame. She's save it closer. Just save it for the uh, the funny episode. That's all I'll tell you. Okay. Anyway, thanks for playing Mem Gauge, boys. It's always fun. I hope the YouTube audience remembers that if you check the description, you can find M4G Takes, the page we use for people to send me stuff. Um, I want to hear your hot takes about the Digimon TCG. Or, like, something we had a question about the other week is that it's not necessarily the card game, but, like, it could be uh, just sort of facets of the experience of playing the Digimon TCG. This week, for example, Bandai announced that hand shuffling is officially BM as hell. And I did. I did. Bro, I am dead. If Marcio is my round six, I am going to go off. Boys, it's on the phone. Boys, it's on the phone. I don't care. We can't talk about it. You don't. I don't care. Sounds like broken here. I can hand shuffle and you can and you're mad. Anyway, I'll have to bust. free round six to me. You are free. I'll have to bust out that one for like three months down the line when we've all forgotten about the discourse, but yeah. that's where we're at. So if you've got anything like that, you know, I hate when people have cloth play mats like that. It could be anything. Why am I being targeted? I don't know. Get over it. Anyway, the point is. I you made it. I have a cross. nice job now. I, I'm allowed to have nice accessories and hand shuffle my cards. God forbid men do anything. <laughs> Uh oh we just left the stream we're on a different kind of podcast now <laughs> um but yeah thanks for playing boys appreciate y'all what's uh, next we're going to hit on acrylic mem gauge markers <laughs> speaking <laughs> of no fan art allowed <laughs> it tricks, i don't think you want them to be doing this cooking what i'm not allowed metal dice <laughs> oh wait, we're plugging Jamie. Yeah, hey, plug Jamie. Hey, friend no, of... we're not friend plugging Jamie. Oh, of... bro, if Jamie wanted me to, I would. That's my guy. <laughs> friend, of, friend of the show, Jamie Conquest has some stuff you can buy. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Buy his stuff. <laughs> you should be able to ask your judge any tops as a form of appeal. Uh, uh, I'm not even kidding. Sometimes, oh, sometimes I like well, if I wake up in the middle of the night. Uh, sometimes I have like a bro, brainwave. Hang on. hang on, I got to gift a sub to the guy who just said that. Uh, sometimes well, I have these title thoughts title where title it's like conquest collectibles and not conquestables. Come on. <laughs> yeah, conquestables would have been good actually. Better yeah. search term. Better you search term. Yeah, Can you imagine search. how many times people will spell conquestable wrong? <laughs> Thank you for yes. that one. And any tops is an appeal. Uh, listen, here's the other thing, is that, like, sometimes I do wake up in the cold sweat in the middle of the night, and I'm like, oh my god, is, 
is the statement is any tops is a funny joke a, a bit from mem cage <laughs> like is there's the bar is so low so do send your takes in and then of course send in your clips too we could do with those y'all know where to look they live in the places that you've looked for things um last thing we had on the docket this week fellas is a segment i know we're a little close to our original allotted endgame but i reckon we could knock this one out in 15 minutes there's a segment I wanted to start running here on the show because <laughs> welcome to <laughs> welcome to this play for game bits welcome. <laughs> um, they we are now halfway Channel through. Bits give Andrew your money. We are now halfway through the Terriermon Double Typhoon Advanced Starter Deck BT15 format, and there has been a suite of events that people have attended, lots of data to take apart and to analyze, and a whole bunch of card game being played. And we thought it would be fun if collectively as a little hive mind, maybe like once a format, we could try and predict a top cut. Like what kind of decks we would expect to see, maybe in terms of ranking them by like, this will be the most seen deck in top cut, this will be the least seen deck in top cut, and these won't make it at all. So given that there is an ultimate cup going on today, gentlemen, and it is only 1.44 p.m. over there in the good old Eastern Standard Time Zone, we probably have a golden opportunity to say, as of this recording, we could try and predict the top cut, because none of us have seen any of the games, right? Nope. 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 Perfect. Well, actually, that's a lie. I was watching for, like, 30 seconds before starting the podcast, I was watching a vault play, like, Red Hybrid versus, like, Numemon or something. Yeah, I tried to open I, I tried to open it to see if I could find out whether Core TCG are hosting it. They are, to call back to the beginning of the show. Um, yeah, and he was just, like, on a break, so, like whatever perfect though that's what we need so um i've gone ahead i'll drop the link here in our pod chat boys um remember we're going to try and keep this one to a crisp 15 minutes so if you guys disagree with the things we're about to say let us know in the comments we like that stuff engagement good uh so we, this we each are we each making one thing where we just put like oh it's a full tier list jesus yeah so what i'm thinking is we'll rename the tiers to like the order that we expect them to top so like top eight top 16 like you know we'll break it down to do we want to say semi-finalist or like the last round semi-finals quarterfinals like how like granular do we want to get here i, I, mean, think, I think it's just like i think you just go like top four top eight top 16 top 64 and then top all... 32 top 64 well the thing okay, is like top, 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 uh, top four is there a difference between top four and top eight for the most part it's like a for draw ul- for ultimate cup What's... yeah for the ulti cup it will be a oh different yeah in that case you do like yeah yeah it would be like first place top eight but... top uh 16 no but the thing is I'm here upgrading. We're not we're not doing this as a tier list. Tier list maker is just the best tool we had on yeah. hand. I want to recreate how much we expect to see a deck in a top. Let the deck. hate motivate. So let's Chris. say it's the, imagine if you will that we're on Eggman events and we're looking at the pie chart he likes to make for the top sixteens. Yeah. How many uh, Bielzamons are there going to be? How many Numemons are there going to be? Sure. Um, that's what we're looking for, and then we'll you order only, it and make it all work. Yeah, I was going to say like you only need like yeah top thirty two and then like scrub. Like, it would be, like, win, top 8. Top 16, I bubbled any tops. But 8 to 16 is, like, not a big difference. A lot of the times it's based off of resistances. All right, fine. Yeah. Top 32, top I bubbled two. and any yeah. tops. Cool. So, that'll be how we go about this. Again, it will be ordered within the tiers. We'll try and do it by, like, the decks that we think will be the most to the decks we think we could be least. And for the purposes of getting the ball rolling... Uh, guys, we're far enough in the format that I do still think Numemon will be the most represented deck in Top Cut. Yep. Um, yeah, it's there's pretty, a lot of decks. Is that Ukamon or is that... Yeah, it's a big old format, but uh, we have a lot of ways to go. Uh, Ukamon is next to Diabora. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was just like... What, is that Nume? Surely Nume so, has yeah. something to represent. I mean, if we find it... There, we'll sorry, platinum, there platinum, is a Platinum Numemon on the second row. Second. You're next to Patamon? Third. Third row for you. Third row for you, my bad. Third row for you. All right. So I think... Yeah, I think it'll certainly be... Uh, well, we're predicting a top cut. I think it will be the most represented deck in top cut. And I also think it'll probably make it to the finals. Yeah, I think Numemon is a win. It's like I a think it's a get to, to the... Yeah, it's a get to the Susan. Yeah, I think Numemon is the kind of deck that if you're playing Numemon, you're playing with the intent to win. Which is like... This is going to sound like a weird concept, but sometimes people play decks with a concept... With, it's like playing to top versus playing to win. Because some yeah. decks, while, while everybody wants to win, some decks 
just cannot because they will have like a couple of bad matchups that you're hoping to avoid. So like yep. you'd play those decks to top as opposed to like Nume, where it's like the pharma revolves around you, you play the deck to win. That's See, a great way to look as at it. As a joke, whilst you were saying that I was gonna find Gallantmon and put it in I bubbled, but I don't even think it's on the list. How dare you? Crimson Mode is, right is, Crimson yeah, is on the on list. On the BL yeah. Star first 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 column. First column on oh yeah. So uh it's Crimson Mode, yeah. That's a deck that can top. I think, yeah, I think Gallant will be in a top 30. Uh, there will be yeah. a top 32 Gallant player in the building. Yes. Like, you, you'll, see one, you'll see at one at minimum least. at top 32. You'll see one, at minimum one Gallant in top 32, and that is at minimum. There's probably a chance you'll see one higher, probably a chance you'll see a bunch lower, but, like, you'll see one at least at top 32 yes. is my guess. Because, like, remember that top You'll, you'll hear a guy who went, yeah, I fought Numimon for three rounds, and then somehow a fucking, like, machine player snuck in all yes. the way, and I got and fucked. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Got, the thing about top 32s is that because our tournaments are not big enough to sort of like uh, account for top 32 placements, in most other card games, a top 32 equals a day two, which Digimon is not the, a game that's big enough to, to let you do that. Uh, top mm -hmm. 32 essentially means that you were X2, which is still a phenomenal score, despite, you know, like what people tell you. Um, yeah. And Gallant is that kind of deck where it's just like, oh, I got paired into two random ass things, but the deck still functioned, and I got a top 32. That's why this still gives you out finalist stem stuff. All right. This is such a weird one, because normally I love to be the guy that roots for it, but because we're trying to make as close and accurate to a real, like, for specifically the ulti cup top cut that we're trying to pretend we're guessing here today, I don't yeah. think there will be a Gallant mod in top 32. Uh, yeah. If you look at the data on Limitless TCG, they ain't converting right now. The Europeans are built different. We are coping. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's speed okay, run the top be, row. I think top be, thirty-two is as high as I'd expect to uh, see one. Are we sticking? Oh, are we sticking on. Mirage? It could just okay. be that like Gallant doesn't work at IRL events, and it works at online events because the per like online events I think tend to have more like tryhard players in the sense that like if you're willing to webcam. Digimon, you probably care about the game mm -hmm. uh, uh, more than the average person that is going to the tournament because it's close by. Yep. And if you're willing to grind, then, you know. I will so, say... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I think while people like to dismiss online results, I tend to look at online results with, like, a more seriousness because it's like, you are more likely to play against meta in an online tournament. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and I think because of that, like the fact that this is an online event, uh, if you look at compare, like I'm trying to use size as an approximation for this here. Since the starter deck release, the highest Gallantmon has placed at any international regional sized event has been at the 53rd at the uh, Mana Vortex regional in Spain. That's Minus the cool. win, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, but that was before the starter deck came out. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, so, starter uh, deck, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that is currently the highest it's right. placed. So we'll see. Just start going through them in order. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, Garbage. Uh, well, hang on. We're not going to go through all of these, right? We're just going to start calling out archetypes, surely, because that'll speed this up. Yeah, Where's Davis? Gonna I, feel go? like, I feel like no. I feel like we just start doing. If we just start putting things that are on, like, just put it in garbage, just so that we don't have to like keep going oh, back sure. on this. So it's like yeah, just go yeah, garbage. Blue flare, Sukuyamon won't top. No, uh, yeah. Pokemon ignore it. We're calling yeah, just well, that. We'll just put platinum there instead. Bloom won't top. Bubbled. Yeah, yeah Bloom no, will okay. You can put a it's single not, person no, no. that bubbled. I will put it in garbage. top 32. I think Bloom is like a top 32 deck because it will just be I played against something bad twice. Like it will be I played against Leviamon or something. I think it, Bloom, you know, did okay. Go at, ahead, like, dark like, Latin unplayable. Bloom did okay in uh, uh, Latin America, but, you know, people, you know, will say what they think about Latin America. But I, I don't think that's yeah. I just went to check Limitless's all-time Bloom data, and I was like, what's the most competitive Bloom events on Limitless? And it's Emily and Johnny. I mean, yeah. Big ups. Yeah, uh, yeah big ups. Um, let's Rave see. Mod, you, can, you, can put the, you can put the Rave mod in Unplayable. Oh, well, we've kind of already gone past a, a real pick there. Red Hybrid. Uh, there will be no, a Red we're, Hybrid. We're, just, we're filtering the real garbage out now so that we can talk about the real cards. Okay. Uh, Hunters, uh, that's real garbage. Yeah. Don't play Hunters. <laughs> Oh yeah, we said that Morgan had to show up and uh, for the first four o like locals and he's like yeah, you got to play hunters one time just to prove to yourself and everyone that the deck is either playable, or unplayable, and then bro no showed. It's like, all right, mm. try and take a man to play hunters. 
Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, at the top of the page, this deck list, uh, sorry, this tier list creator was very nice. So Zwart D represents Omnimon Zoo. Uh, Omni X is like the quick draw turbo Omni thing that Andrew put oh. in the, yeah, that's. <laughs> that's uh, a joke. I like that deck. That joke's a joke. Yeah. It's, it's, it scams a lot of people. Dude, Derek got yeah, second do you think you can, Do you, th <sighs> fine. Uh, Mame Tyranamon is Green Gotcha. You guys gotta guess that. Shadow yeah. Serafi is Setcon. Ghoulmon is Millith Loop, and Brigade is D Brigade. Whereas Oryu is Digi Please. I see. Okay. okay. So if that helps us, so Mame, Mame Tyrana is unplayable. Who's the hot Crania? No, 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 no. Green, Green, Green Gotcha is like it's it's doing it's doing bits oh yeah wait i forgot what his name exists doesn't have yeah. leo Rainia, kuzaha gg can all go there yeah Bards can go there Rainia, royal as well uh hercules can go there ragnar is apocalypse dark masters omni yeah uh, it's worth d is being used as that placeholder so i think we okay. just leave apocalypse out yeah okay, that's that's good. Good. sucks right now just in uh, what do we think about virus imperial it's not good enough because it, it can't it can't if it yeah if it if uh, it could afford to... Yeah. All right. Uh, Gaiumon can go. He's just a worse version of the Greymon Toolbox in this format. Mother D. Exa. Examon uh, for sure, yeah. Examon on pong. the third row. Third row. Ping pong, yeah. Ping. Marukimon, uh, what's that bozo doing here? Yeah. Bo you, can, you can go ahead and throw uh, three monkeys in there, too. Fish. Gonna put all the yeah, hybrids that aren't blue. Most of the hybrids, yeah. All the hybrids aren't red. You mean Darbic yeah. doesn't really work right? I, in my opinion. Yeah, Derek's not at the event, so that thing ain't topping. Mm -hmm. uh, Agubon, sorry. Oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Diaboro. Diaboro. Like Diaboro on Ace is not enough for that deck to be relevant. It's uh, Lastra. Lastra. Uh, or not, no, sorry, now he's second to Lastra. Second to Lastra, Lastra uh, Colin. Yeah. Ragna. Probably, yeah. Uh, Diarbit, Amphi, Gamma. You think Amphi? Nah. I, I, Amphi's not. Amphi's not it. Like I, Amphi's my. I'm going to into the event deck if I get really bored. She's like she's not ready yet. Black or Grandma no TK doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> deck is funny, not real. Grace um, Nova's any thought? Oh, uh no no no. Grace Nova has a it has a bubble thirty third. I think it's probably at okay, the bottom it line. Will, it's like sure. I'll give that deck. It does. I think that's. Early. I think that is as low as you can go before it's any junk. Yeah, it's like I bubbled. You know, it's okay. like okay, you got top one hundred with Grace. Uh, Edamon could probably go to garbage. He's right next yeah, to Edamon. Edamon. There's just yeah garbage. I think most uh fish, fish. fish. Tri tricks isn't there. Fish. Yeah. Uh these are blue all hybrid, blue hybrid can go. You think blue hybrid can probably go? Yeah. Okay. I, I also am kind of looking at or you can going like he could probably go. Ah uh, hey whoa what are we doing? Royal Knights. Hey Harry or you want or you can has a top eight this format. I don't think we can just check it out. Okay sure. Uh I, Imperial, I think I... Imperial definitely that deck can. Yeah that be. hasn't done anything yet. Yeah, bugs can go probably too. Old Force can go away. Uh, From here, it should go to the bottom. All right, thank you, Drix. Thanks for I permission to kill the fish. I think <laughs> this is the uh, Most Most is still there. That's like something that is worth like. Mastemon does have middling results. It's yeah. not as good as I would put it in the no tops right now. Yeah. Okay, sure. So I think I think this is good enough. Then? Cool. Like everything, everything. Like I said, we really, there's, we, Mitama, we, there's Mitama, and then there's Kentaro. Oh wait, um, I want to. And then there's Patamon, So like, I guess we have to. I want to so... kill Cross. I want to kill Crossheart really quick. I think it's really hard to play Crossheart this format. You cool. think so? You have like Kyrie from Security playing out Darlu to shrink Numes. Levia more. I, I guess I oh, didn't Levia. play the Numei. I tried playing it in. I was gonna say I, I think Levia and I think uh Arm. I think uh Terrier Mon are just like really fucking hard to deal with. Like uh, a black yeah, Mega Gargomon with black Digicross rapid stares at you. Or... Like structure deck black rapid stares at you, and you have no meaningful way to interact with it. Uh, you can put me Tama there. For, I guess like well, me Tama and Kentaro. Terry's not. Terry's not. Terry's not the event. Okay, just yeah. Put me Tama and Kentaro's there for now because like those it, we'll just use Patamon as like yeah. Yeah. Like back. yeah. All, All right, right. Cool. Uh, I think this so is we're, we're, kind of work there. We're, we're, irrespective. Like a deep down rush. Rush. Yeah, he's like a rookie rush deck. Okay, sure. But here's what I'm saying. We don't actually have to get the exact ordering on this, right? We're yes, trying yes, to recreate yes. an Eggman event pie chart top 16 yes, here. Yes. So right. what we will assess ourselves on next week when we look like idiots in a minute <laughs> is how close were we to what Eggman ended up data reporting. So uh, it's only going to be sorted from left to right uh, and then in top to bottom in terms of like the highest placements 
then the most frequent card within those placements. So sure. Uh, let's zoom back up to the tippy top and see what we've got because I think we just have slugs. Yeah, we got slugs. I still then... slugs is probably the best. Um, I would like to nominate Red Hybrid as not actually making yep. top eight. No, Red Wait. Hybrid. Red Hybrid has fallen off a cliff if you look at its results. The it conversion's been... really bad, but it's also the most Sorry, represented deck. It, aver in the top 32. Yeah. it averages like, yeah, top 32 would be where I'd put it. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, okay, so there's 8 and 32. It's 8 and 32 because we said we that 16, 16 wasn't. You think? I swear you advocated yeah, yeah, the 16. See, there's no difference between 8 and 16 other than resistances. Uh, top 16 is basically like you were X1 at the end of the day. Yeah, so why do we need it? No, 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 I'm saying, yeah, so get rid of top 8, that's what I was saying. You just have one of them, you don't have both. Top 16 is the same as top 8, basically. Right. Because they're... The only difference is, uh, like, a draw instead of a loss, or, like, uh, opponent's resistances. Top 16 is, like, the end goal. If you can top 16, it's like you were X1 at the end of the day. And they'll be in the pie chart, which is what yeah, we're trying to Yeah, they'll be in the pie chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw up the softest softball of all time, put Davis in top 16, probably also in top 4. Davis has not gone an event since the structure deck came out without making top 16. Yeah. Yeah, Davis is probably Davis is season. the most consistent no, other than play, Davis Dave? can play for the Susan. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they, I, say, say, if it's not going up there, it should be. Davis is uh, handing the Susan to someone else when they hit the fucking brick wall matchup in the final round and draw to give it to table two for the third event in a row. Yeah, that would be funny. Um, um, I'd like I, to nominate Mirage. Mirage, Mirage is not consistent, one. but it's definitely a top 16er. Absolutely. Are we seeing Mirage's convert no, outside of Europe? Uh, Mirage, Mirage, hasn't, Mirage hasn't had, other than the LATAM event, Mirage hasn't had a top eight in a while. Yeah, I was going to say, like, because... LATAM and Europe are really good, but, like, this is a US regional and they do oh, not sure. make that. Oh, pardon me, that's not true. I forgot about the results last week. There were, there was a Mirage in fourth at the April Core TCG one. So right. Mirage could definitely be playing for this. Fine. My thing with Mirage is that, like, blue tends to not do well into purple because blue doesn't have protection and, like, uh, you know, like, versus something like Beelzemon or, like, um, What's another like stinker matchup for Mirage? Levia. Levia. For Mirage, Levia. You think so? Actually, wait, well, no, it's... Wait, no, you're, you're checking at level 7. You're actually. Yeah, you're checking at 7. Uh... Uh, Setcon. Setcon's really bad for Mirage. Setcon, there you go. That's yeah, a good one. Yeah. Um... Uh, speaking of Setcon, top 16. Yeah, minimum. Yep. Yeah, I don't think like, I don't think just, we'll red, ever win again. red hybrid and setcon. One of them will break out based on whichever. No, like, if there's more setcons, red hybrid will do better. If there's less red hybrid, setcon will do better. You know how it goes. Uh, Thus, I want I want to assumes its own tail. I want to pitch a bit of a take here. I think this is the format Leviamon comes back to top sixteen. It's one of those decks where it's like the more or less people play around it, the or in their yeah. deck building. It's it's now missed two in a row, so it'll probably make at least one top yeah. sixteen this time. Sure, it, like it still always oh, has representation. We put, we put Royal Knights on bubbled. I feel like there'll be a Royal Knights player who's just I going to put it on top thirty two. Yeah, I think Royal Knights okay, is better than bubbled. Yeah, sounds good. It's it's one of those like, you'll either. never hear about the top thirty twos unless you go to the event page and look at the leaderboards. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Royal Knights has top 32 potential at the very least. Like, you can yeah. go X2 on Royals because, like, if you go X1, you're probably starting You're probably starting to dodge some of the new maze. Yeah, uh, also, can we, we, also, we can kind of play the new Magma, which is funny. We want to go uh, ahead and put Terriermon up at top 32. Sorry, top 16. Uh, I... It hasn't I, missed one since it came out either. Okay, yeah. but that is the same guy. No, there's been the multiple guy. lists. Like, no, 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 there's yeah, there's one from Chile, one from Texas. There was one two from... in Chile, and then there was one in Texas, and then there was the core TCG, the the Texas regional, and the other one, the the two American ones, was the same guy. Oh, the Steve Lee guy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Steve Lee. It was the same. Well, he's guy. probably. I, I would assume he's playing there today. So yeah, that's that's what I'm Top saying. So, then, yeah. Assuming that it's the same person, there's a chance that he does it again. But sure. so far, the success in the uh, in America for Gargomon has been the same guy. What are but the thoughts on Jess? What are the thoughts on Jessmon Gang? I think bubbles. It, like, it bubbles. Or, uh, I, I just I don't believe in it. Outside of like, I don't know what it's supposed to do to interact with just getting killed by Newman too fast. It has. Yeah. If they lean into like blocker blank, to, blocker blank makes all the sisters blockers, right? Every sister becomes a blocker as long as there's a. So like that blocker. with Gankuo is like. You know, kind of hard for them to remove, but it's like you get is, it will one shot some of stuff and it's getting safer against things Just like the tier below any time. Where do we it's, think it's, it, swing, it swings at seven? It's basically insta beating Leviamon. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, let's see what else we got. We put Setcon up there. Where's uh, Shine? 
Grey Mon- Shine, I think, is a Oh, we, we haven't put Yellow Vaccine up. Yellow Vaccine's a top 16er. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think really? 16 won't win, but it will top. Uh, Fenrir, and- Fenrir, I think Fenrir is a top 16er. It's yeah, almost always yeah. making it there. There's like one or yeah, two. Fenrir exceptions. has just been falling short every fucking event it goes to. It's just because uh, like, you have to run text for your red matchups, and that's assuming that you play against yeah. the red matchups. If you're not on Gato Uber, what are you doing? And then yeah. it's like. A delicate plan if there's a set con in the room. The other thing is that uh, if they have Monzai X, it's really weird, right? Because they'll have Monzai X maybe with Proto and Numei X under it, and uh, you have to kill something, so you can't kill the Monzai X. And the nightmare scenario is that you kill something else that doesn't matter, but if they're still left with a few bodies, you check security and Omnimon's War pops out, and that triggers the Monzai X on the opponent's turn, which just shrinks your Fenrir to, like, an amount of DP that Fenrir can no longer finish the OTK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, like, the most unfortunate scenario that I can think of as to, like, why Fenry just doesn't convert very well. Also, it, the Deva matchup can be a little bit rough. Yeah, I don't you like that matchup. You have to basically da- you have to do donuts around the Deva player to get anything done. It feels miserable. Yeah. Uh, I want to go... But I want to know... It's miserable. I want to name Millith really quickly. I think that's a top 32-er. It has exactly one top before the start of that game out and one afterwards, so I don't think it's going higher than that. All right. But it's a lot can of just, effort. Can we get... Can we move green... Gotcha somewhere. I don't like that it's here. It bubbles. It bubbles. I think I think one person will take it for a comedy, and then like he'll miss one gotcha, and that'll be the end of his run. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to talk about Black or Gray and Melga because they're like titans of the past that are kind of just sitting conspicuously waiting to be. Melga's bubbling, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I want to believe... does. Melga has the opposite problem that Mirage does, where Melga actually does have to check the Levia security. My issue with Melga is that I don't think people believe in the deck. I think all the blue players are playing Mirage. Or... Or Gabu Bond, because they're just or bored. Or Gabu Bond, apparently, yeah. There's another... Isn't that like another good blue deck? Or is it just... There's an armor. Oh, that's the other one, right? Wait, 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 yeah. Wait, armor. Uh, the Mega X is there. Game. Mega X is there. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. next there, to there's Alpha. a couple oh, there of is. decks that I know how good they are, but it's like... Oh yeah, Trix is also right. What do you do about looking at like structure deck rapid mon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so it's you like just like that card just bend, that card just bends you over. Which one is more popular? Uh, no, okay, I do. I, Marcia's point before about how there's not a ton of terrier mons. I still think I'm confident that it bubbles because it can't. They can't all. Yeah, I think it will find mon. one terrier mon, and that will be. I think the deck is at least top thirty two worthy. I think Mirage okay. is insane. But it's just people don't believe in the deck. But I genuinely think the deck is really good. Yeah, Melga is better than the stuff in that tier. Yeah, it's like, put it up to 32, whatever. It'll, it'll just, happen, I people believe. People are just not confident in Mel. I think Harry could maybe do it on Melga because... Like, you know what he's going like, to be doing instead? Alpha... Put that shit at the top of any tops. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's where my, that's where my dad belongs. It in has a top post-structure deck. It bubbles. If it doesn't it, it had a it top in a, in a It had a top in a region where they don't have access to RB01, so there were no Numes. Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, make the deck top 32 yeah i would like, like to nominate armor for a top 16 performance absolutely. it's been getting more yeah, and so. more and yeah more absolutely. and more popular every time and so, now we're hitting the break point yeah exactly it's like more a bunch of people are playing armor because like the deck is genuinely fun to play uh but this the thing about armor is that there's this is another quick thing to mention about annoying security bombs for some of these decks some of these decks just lose if they check the the magna Yes. Yeah. Like what? Like if Fenrir checks the magna Davis. while they're in, if Fenrir checks the magna while they're in the red, they lose the game. Davis also, is an insta loss for armor unless you sack somebody. That's all also, it is. It's also like the thing with armor is that like I think there's genuinely two styles of armor to be played. There's a, a version of the deck that like focuses more on like magna X, which granted is a half of a card still, and you know it's very good if you're in the X one bracket. Like if you're trying to get your, you know your. If you're trying to bully Numemon, Magna X puts them on. Show me a D Digi Evolve. It show yeah. me a D Digi Evolve or be wide and like. The the only problem I have so with it. Comically wide, you can actually shrink it to zero. Yeah, Fellas, which isn't not, very far. N- not to break the illusion of our show too much, but Marcio's got to move, so I think we should wrap up our at least our top sixteen archetypes. I, I, right. got, I got a little bit of time. I got a little bit of time. I got one okay. more in me. All, All right, right. I, I go. go. Uh, machine. Machine is the sleeper. I think this is the format. I think it takes a top sixteen this time. Whoa. I've been looking at I've been looking at the machine results, and I think compared to everything that's if it dodges blue armor and doesn't get its shit sword stripped forever, 
I think it has a really viable way throughout this tournament. The, uh, it has a decent-ish Numemon matchup. It can completely fold over the Leviamon stuff because if they just have another, like, oh, you killed me, float into my next Machine Dramon. Yeah. Like, it's so my, solid. My issue with Machine is that, like, I think it just gets checked by, like, anything that is able to, like, top 16 somewhat. Like, Armors will pick it apart. Mm -hmm. uh, Patamon will put it in security. Uh, Nume. Fucking Nume. Black Blue Magnum. Black Blue Henry Magnum turning it sideways. A, Black Blue Magnum was designed in a lab to kill Chaos X. Yeah. I deserve it. You just, take, you just take the machine and the Chaos Mon from when it loses its protection. Yep. Yeah. It just be, like, it, yes, it's a tall stack with redirect, but you just purge. Or you just actually remove it the only i i could see it being in top 16 at the very bottom because we are looking at like just from the na results we're looking at nearly 45 percent player rate of red hybrid and you know mm -hmm. what this deck was designed to do kill yeah, red yeah, hybrid true. players Please like yeah, just that's true, actually. as long as the red hybrid play there are enough other red hybrid players so doing much well of this fucking so much of this is literally just our guess on how many red hybrids do you think they'll be like 40 percent again early I think, I like, I think right. do you think the red hybrid players will find the setcom players in the early rounds and doom them forever, or do you think the red hybrid players will find the machine players in the early rounds and it's fun? It's, it's complicated too because the setcom variants where they're now on like revelations and stuff like that, like some of those start to start picking up in terms of like it gets harder for a hybrid to just blanket beat setcom now. Um, yeah, like, so like it's weird. Um, the thing is, like as Andrew was saying, it's like. Red Hybrid is like over represented for how good that actually is. I think people on paper looked at like, whoa, Crimson Blaze is very good. What's the best Crimson Blaze deck? I guess I'm going to play Red Hybrid because mm -hmm. it was good last format. Also, it's Ultimate Hybrid, Cup. They'll it's have... also Ultimate Cup, right? Yeah, people like winning Red Hybrid cards with their Red, with Hybrid, their Red Hybrid. But I think Red Hybrid generally fucking sucks. Like, there, it just doesn't feel good. Levium on X is so bad for it. Yeah. Levium sucks. Armor sucks. Machine sucks. Uh, you have good matchups into scroll up to top eight. Davis fucking suck. Uh, Gargo sucks. Vaccine is fine. Fenrir is good. Machine sucks. It's like the format is just not yeah. kind to it. Yep. Unless you get like a like god run. Yeah. If you hit all the rogue decks and kill them, Red Hybrid goes nuts. But assuming you play against nothing but like the top three decks all day, which you know very unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. But if if your whole day is comprised of like Nume Davis, you're fucked. Yep. Uh, I want to throw a quick shout out to the Omnimon control. I think it's going to probably break a top 32, but it won't go higher because it's this deck that just keeps losing. Sure. Time. Did I lose that? Is yeah. That, is, is... Uh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, okay. that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Omnimon control top. Top 32. I think it's probably right around where Melga will do. Wait, do we think that it's better than the Omnimon Yeah, I think turbo? it's the yeah. Dark Masters Omnimon control is a better deck for sure. Yeah, it just has like more interaction points with things like that. Like the Dark Masters. Uh, there's a lot better. of good decks that just okay. Getting Remember when I said I had to go? Mm -hmm. Now that I had to go, but the Yugo ban list came out. You're shitting me. Hey, can we speed run this quickly? I gotta read that. All right, <laughs> right. right, Turbo. Uh, if, if any of okay. you fuckers in this Twitch chat say anything that's on this ban no list, spoilers. I'm killing you. All right, anyway, we can see it together. Uh, Black or gray? Uh, he's top three. No, he's bubbling. He's bubbling. He's bubbling. Bubble. Bubble. Yeah, yeah. hit a yellow vaccine. Yellow vaccine. Uh, Bills. Bills. Top, 16. Top, 16. Top, 16. top 16. Top 16. Top 16. Actually, fuck it. It, yeah. it gets it. Gets it. Shine. Uh, shine top 16. Shine. Someone. Top 16. Someone yeah. is Marcus Damon. Belfon. Uh, Belfon. Any top? No. No. It, it's six. Uh, ooh, I think 32. I think it had its moment. Okay. Sure. You think it was a one and done? No. I just don't uh, think it'll get enough. It, uh, people uh, forgot nice about it. It won't idiot. Here's a biting crush. Top that, that, that. No. No. Brigade is bubbling. Brigade is bubbling. Sure. Perfect. The top 32. Even. I don't think the deck is bad. It's just top 32 for Wargreymon for sure. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll put both yeah, I think there. it's like top 32 capable. Uh, okay, Bond, I think bubble. some stupid blue player is going to make this shit go top 32. I think some blue player is going to just go, hey, this deck's funny. Uh, Leopard. Uh, uh, bubble. It doesn't have... The, any like, tops, any tops, any okay, tops, yes, any tops. Any tops, Okay, fine. so I Ooh. have this issue where like, okay, not to like <laughs> toot my own horn, I mm -hmm. think I'm, an above, I'm like one of the better green players, but there's only one of me pushing these fucking like decks that i think are pretty good like for example i think uh leomon is pretty good right now oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it has a rough ish data match no, because like uh, leomon is better than like everything in that top 32 tier top except, like millith i think it's like i think you could put it in front of melga my okay, okay. you have some good matchups into shit like levy is not too bad you have um good matchup bring up uh scroll up i need to see stuff <laughs> Uh, second is fine. You have a good matchup into Mirage. You have a good matchup into, like, 
vaccine. But the problem is that, like, for example, Davis, 7k means that, like, you can't bot deck it with um, Heavy Leo, right? So, like, you can swing at the Davis and they can blast evolve all they want, but you're not actually touching them, which means you get your restands, but it's like a unstoppable wall, immovable object type of thing. Hey guys, I'm thinking about this. I'm looking at it right now. Or bugging. Red Hybrid is a top 16 deck here for sure. Yes. It, okay. I think it can top 16 if it yeah. has the run. It needs. Yeah. To have it it just run. needs the run. But like, there have been. All I mean, these it's, one it's in like I was saying them. earlier. It's like if the machine players find them first, they're put cooked. it in the bin. Uh, put it in the bin. Put D Brigade or Digi Police lower than where it is right now. Put it in the <laughs> bin. That deck sucks my nuts. It's terrible. I don't. I don't think it the just does, it, bad. it cargo cargo Vermont is no Marcio that. Every green card in that deck is very good. And once it gets things not named Cargo Dramon that it can play with, it'll be great. The problem is that like you really are just hoping to draw Ryuta, Jinryu, or uh, Jinryu, Hisaru, or you in order every time. And if you don't, you're fucked. Uh, Apocalypse is a joke, by the way. Just get that really quick. Yeah, all right. So we, we go to uh, lock in. We go to lock uh, in. Smile for, wanna... the, smile for the screenshot. All right, excellent. <laughs> We're all gonna look like fucking idiots next week. Alpha on first place. Here it comes. <laughs> no, I just like I'm looking Anyways, at like Andrew. Do you want to? We oh, put oh, machine. Oh. We put machine higher than Red Hybrid in that screenshot. We are cooked. Well, well if machine everybody... wins, it will be at the expense of Red Hybrid. Sure. Yeah, right. It's like the counter to the counter. Where's the Yu-Gi-Oh yeah, yeah, so. list? Balsio, send it. Are we actually doing that on stream? Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. I yeah, this is a mis misplay for game delay, does other guard delay. games. Yeah, we are a card game delay. podcast. That oh, I've just seen a spoiler for it. Oh my god, I'm gonna well, scream on, on camera. On, Andrew, on. Andrew, you picked a great week for me. Okay, first of all, uh, click, click on the image. Click, click, on, the, on, the first click image. on the image. Click on the image. Yeah. Okay, Link or Evo? Link or Evo! Oh, no! Savage? Savage? Summon Limit! Come on, Summon Limit! Wait, 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 wait. Am I bugging? is saved! This is forbidden? Holy yes! They killed Link or Evo. They actually did it. Wait, wait, April 15th? That's like... That's on Monday. Bro, oh, no, 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 no. Is dead. It's on Monday in NA. And then April for the 22nd. Okay, wait, hang on. So far, this is heat. This is unbelievable. Barone is dead? Fuego. Yeah, what's the fuck? Fuego. This is Fuego. Fuego. Wait, hang on. Look at Summon limit. Summon limit. What the? All right, next, okay. next image. Next image. Next image. Oh! oh yes! Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Wait, pro, wait oh where's Marcia? Protoss is God. back. Colossus is back. Kieran, he's back! Anti spell to one! They oh, the last also, by the way, Law the Last Dragon Ruler. No! Why Colossus? Why? Uh, it, it's the last toss card. Who gives a shit? Uh, no, but that hey, was what the fuck is Chicken Game doing here? What, what yeah. is Chicken Game and Protoss it, doing here? Marcia, why is Protoss funny. here? Marcia, why is Protoss here? Uh, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh my right. god. Hit me with it. What's on the semi limited list? Let's go to the joke. Let's see Harpoor to two. Oh! No, they didn't even do Get It Night? Also, delicious memory. That's yeah. Amazing. Okay, you ready for the spoiler I saw, by the way? This is one thing that got spoiled for me. Go to the next image. What? Let's fucking go! Harp, harp and Wait, malicious. Harp, harp and malicious. No, engage! Engage is back, though. What did it cost? <laughs> Bro, I don't give a shit. I got three harps and three malleys. I gotta go. I'm okay. literally buying a I'm literally buying a secret malicious right now. Okay, the thing is, like, nothing off the ban list. Okay, so one carry. I don't have to buy anything for this ban list. It's just those, we are free from Snake Eye. Those Fire ban to zeros are crazy. Yes, the ban no to zeros. No summon limit. No summon limit is under. That's nuts. No summon limit. Karibo, Baron de Fleur. It means like. Ba Baron de Fleur being gone is nuts. Okay, you uh, can't play pure Snake Eye anymore. It has to be Fire King Snake Eye. That's, like, the only good version of the deck, which means, like, like that deck loses to more shit. Like you can play like cosmic and it's cheap actually Mali, fuck. fucking three Mali. That's insane. We literally talked about how that couldn't happen. That, yeah, the the semi limit list exists for Mali. Here we are. What, are you, what combos can you even? You can do everything. I don't know now. what to do with a third Mali. I got what I gotta do with a third Mali is once the show is over, I gotta go find out what rarity my secret Malis are and buy a third one. What do you think? Well, Andrew? uh. Andrew, I, I recognize half of these cards. Uh, Chicken Game was one that stood out to me that was quite funny. I, that is really... Chicken Game being back feels very silly. Yeah. I, I, know, I joke about this every time I see a Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list. The way they have done Magic Specter Unicorn on the ban list, is, you know the little thumbnail icon it's got there as a pendulum? Yeah. yeah. That is the ugliest graphic Konami have ever really officially produced. <laughs> it looks like it was dipped in Shrek. <laughs> like a chicken um, nugget with green ketchup. All right, what Mali? 
what Mally do I have? I think I have this one. Hey boys, Zero. we're still live on the show. <laughs> oh yeah, true. But uh, anyways, we want to sign off. And uh, and what fuck market watch Marcio? Do you have a funny joke to say here? What uh, what, what is the, what is the funny Yu Gi Oh card to invest in right now? What floodgate? Now, now that now that summon limits banned, what funny what funny floodgate should we all buy and play? Um, is it a synchro zone angle? I can't believe Valor lived again. Valor can live. That's fine. Valor's fine. We can People start playing like, that real card. fucking cards now. That's crazy. We can play oh real. Oh my god! Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't have to play summon limit anymore. Holy shit! Okay, these secret Mallies are gonna be. Hmm. I was not fast enough on anyway. the day. Anyways, on the end of that podcast, I'm going to leave this podcast 20 quid uh, or have a good night, everyone. Yeah, it was a fun one. I appreciate everyone for dropping by for Memory Gaze Room and also just being just vibing in chat. We'll be back next week, slightly later. About the time that this is ending now is the time we're hoping to start next week. Uh, okay. Saturday's 7-ish p.m. is going to be like the locked in time, kind of, unless we tell you otherwise. But just keep an eye on like the community post for that. Uh, appreciate all the members uh, and the Twitch subs that have been supporting the channel. You're making things much easier to do as we try and do more. I'm going to try and go to more locals and maybe we'll start doing daily content when I have the content. Wow. The short was great. You should do more of that short. We'll also do yeah, more the shorts of the shorts. Are fun. Uh, I, the, locals, the local vlog, it was, it was peak. It was great. Which also uh, is... I just, while well, I'm here, uh, I was the only one that got my prediction right. Feels good. No, I mean, tricks. What was your what prediction? Was your prediction? Oh, Trix did win. My bad. My bad. Yeah, Trix, Trix, yeah, Trix was just like, "Oh wait, by the way, everyone, I'm goaded." And Sorry, he, I'm not. He I'm not actively all over their typhoon. I'm not actively looking at Tom's face right now, so I forgot Tom was in the in the short. I have a yeah. brain damage hole right where things go in and they don't come back out. Which is why I've been playing uh, brain training every single stream at the start. So if you want to see wow, how Andrew, dumb i am you, what, you should how would how would people what button would they press on their screen right now in order to be able to keep up with you playing brain training on stream they should they should hit the follow button on twitch.tv slash knt elixir if you're on youtube then you should click the twitch icon that's somewhere in my banner because it will send you over there i stream basically every day haven't that much this week but it's there jambo was also that's technically really- right because he did just say undefeated and he technically didn't lose that he did just johnny get load. johnny load also, follow the TikTok. If you want the shorts and you're not already just stalking my shorts tab <laughs> on YouTube, we have a TikTok that reposts all of them at sometimes completely different times. Sometimes they're earlier on TikTok, sometimes they're later. Either way, <laughs> watch them on both because we're on there. Help us break the bubble of basically 200 of you. But uh, yeah, we outside. appreciate everyone for supporting all the content we've been doing. I will keep trying to put out more and more content and we will go to the moon. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't already. Hit it on Twitch if you have Amazon Prime. It's free. Uh, thanks, boys, for joining me. Uh, Marcia will not be around for Boko, as is the tradition at this point. Ignore the fact that he was in the most recent Boko that came out to the public. Uh, yeah, if you want to do the fan Netflix. art like uh, Luftik is uh, of... Any of us eating shit at the bottom of a uh, pile of stairs next to a Segway or hoverboard because uh, no, the hoverboard be like- illegal. That, that was the specific ask. It can't be a Segway because then we're, we'll be too Paul Blart adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can't do that, boys. I have a reputation to uphold. We don't have uh, we don't have a hashtag for fan art, but if we start getting fan art, there will be. So uh, yeah, appreciate all of y'all, and uh, we're gonna shoot some sort of miscellaneous uh, bonus content. Which will be out for people in a month, unless you're a champion. Then it's when it gets edited. Yeah, I appreciate (laughs) y'all. Bye. Bye. Let's get it.